Conservation Commission meeting. Um, first, well, we're not quite at 7.05 by my clock. So, Chuck, are there any minor projects? Um, yeah, there is one minor project. Or there is a minor project on, um, let me just see. I do have a minor project to go over. So hold on a second. Okay. Let's see if I can find that. Is it related to snow removal? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. It could be. Let's get more prepared for these minor projects. Here we go. So this is a question that I have um, for the commission. This minor project is also on Whittier. Very popular street these days. Mm. He's doing here is that one story structure is going to turn into a two story structure. And um, all the work happens above with no ground disturbance, but the need for access around the house and staging around the house. Mm -hmm. If there was anything in the backyard, it would be a minor project permit. Um, and something that we could watch. The only new addition is that proposed roofed porch in the front. In the front. In the front, outside of our jurisdiction. So that deck is there. Every yeah, there. yep. He's not going to resurface the deck or do anything. He says he's not going to do anything in the back. Now, given what I had to choose from, and. You know, I didn't know whether to let this go completely and say, hey, look, it's, it, it doesn't need any, um, you know, any watching and so no erosion control, no looking before and after. So I said, well, let's, let's fill out a minor project permit because you're outside that 50-foot area. You're going above. There is staging, but it's temporary disturbance. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I thought I'd bring this to you because it hasn't come up before. Well, our, get some feedback. Our, our discussion was that if you're beyond 50 feet <coughs> and you're not disturbing the ground surface, you're not digging a hole, you're not mm -hmm. excavating, you don't even need a minor permit. But in this case, I don't think a minor permit is inappropriate, but nothing more than a minor permit. If right. he's really right. not disturbing the ground and putting in staging, I wouldn't call it. No. No. Disturbing the ground. Yeah. So I think at the most a minor permit. I, I tend to agree. Okay. Yeah, I agree too. So he's, he's this is one story he's putting a second story on? He's putting a second story on, and then on the, that building. And then the porch in the front, which is beyond the 100 foot. The porch in the front, and, you know, if, if there was no permit, it would be up to him where the staging area is, where any <coughs> um, dirt that he needed to dig out would be, if they're driving trucks around the back. All these things probably aren't going to happen. But if we don't have a permit at all, then I don't go out and look at it at least twice. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's fine. And plus, it's a fairly gentle grade. I mean, it's... Um, it's not steep. So, the, so the, but the question... It's only the, four feet. The question is, if this came up and I said, we don't need a permit at all, would you guys be upset? Or would that not work out because you want to have at least inside the buffer zone something? I, I don't. If it's not disturbing the ground, I think our policy was if it's not disturbing the ground at all, and if it's beyond 50 feet, you don't even need a minor permit. You're just all set. Even for a, this is a pretty big construction project, but it is <coughs> on top of what's already existing. Oh yeah. If um, he was building a new foundation, then absolutely that'd be a different story. To to some point, I disagree. Uh, I think, um, and maybe this is. Um, I'm not sure how this falls in the approach, but I think um, if work is being undertaken within that 100 feet, I think we need some official notification. Not, not according to the way we changed the regulations two years ago. There's a category if you're beyond 50 feet and not disturbing the ground, you don't have to do anything. We can double check. I'm going from yeah, memory. But yeah, I, we can. But I, I just think, think that's that, what we said. But I think, you know, that. but here's... Unfortunately, and maybe my uh, maybe I'm jaded in, in this standpoint, but unfortunately, 
a lot of my experience has been uh, they'll come in for this permit, but then while they're out there, they'll do maybe a couple of other things. Um, and I think if well, no... That's, that's a violation. <laughs> which, which we do get on a uh, fairly regular basis. So, I mean, in, in order to be precautionary and just have some limit of some work description well, kind of on file. Let's check the regulations um, because we did pass those regulations. If my memory is correct, yeah. then they wouldn't have to do Is that, that under the minor projects? No, it's a separate. Uh, it well, was a I, separate I think, addition. I think it's, it's easy enough without getting into a long discussion for you to uh, ask the commission on a case-by-case -case basis if, it, if it's questionable. You know? Well, no, I think we totally, we, I understood minor project permit beyond 50 feet on a small project, but this one was kind of it's bigger. almost it's like bigger. Right. we wouldn't have to watch it at all. Right. I mean, right. It, it really is what it is. You just have right. to take a deep breath and say, no, we don't need a permit. Right. It's kind of scenes. But I, I guess my point is these are so infrequent. It, it's usually pretty cut and dried. And because they're so infrequent, you can very easily ask us um, or reach out to one of the commission members and think, ask whether or not we should ask the commission, that type of thing. You know, we, yeah, we probably should just put it before the commission and see whether or not we need it. Because it doesn't come up that often, does it? This is the first time, and that's why I brought it to you. Well, there yeah. you go. So there is... Um yeah, we can look into the, the regs during the next meeting, but there is some mention here about buffer zone projects that are not permitted by this procedure include but are not limited to, and there is a subsection C, additions. So, I mean, you know, lateral additions or vertical additions, you know, that's not s stipulated here, but you'd, you'd assume it would be covered. You know, what if they want a cantilever? You know, um, is that going to be covered under a minor project? Um, you know, where there's a significant amount of work being undertaken. I, I just would rather err on the side of safety in terms of us knowing the extent of the project. So searching the word 50 feet, the only thing that came up was in the minor project permit, and it really didn't, it doesn't help out because in that paragraph, it talks about uh, 100 square feet and um, no foundations, which helps this argument, but it also has a size limit of 100 square feet. This is beyond that. So, and it doesn't say anything about you don't need a permit. It just says that's how you qualify. Yeah, there is a section where you don't need a permit. Yeah, yeah. So, um, are we going to look into the regulations or? Yeah, we can look I th at it. I think and we we'll should. Pour back. Yeah. Okay. I think we should. But for this one, we'll just go with the minor project. Is that what I'm hearing? Either minor project or nothing. I could go in. Right. Way. So let's. What's the decision? Maybe we should take a vote on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I move that we allow this project without any permit or minor project filing. Okay. Um, all those motions have been made. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? <laughs> Abstention? <laughs> split vote. Let's revisit it the no, next no, no. week. No, no, when it's split, it goes, what is no. it, has to go? It has to have four to pass. It has to have four to pass. <laughs> well, then so that motion it is what it is, not. and I have a minor project permit, right? Right. right. Yep. Right. So. Okay, next. Okay. It's democracy for you. Um, next, is it, oh, it's past 11, 7.05. Let's, um, let's, discuss the stormwater general permit. I think I need to read the script. I don't think we discussed it at the last meeting. If you did, you were no, alone. It's, it's I was alone. <laughs> first meeting right here. This is the first meeting yes. for it. Okay. So. 639. Okay. So um, we will now begin the public hearing for um, notice of intent DEP number 270-0638 stormwater general permit Reading. Public Works Department Engineering Division. <coughs> it is being opened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 131, Section 40 as amended, and the Reading General Bylaws Section 5.7. The hearing will be conducted in the following manner. 
The applicant will present the proposal. The Commission will receive reports from its administrator. The Commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. The public will then be given an opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the Chair. Please give your name and address before your comments and or questions are presented. There's an attendance sheet at the door. If you haven't already, please, uh, please do us the favor of signing in. Um, and at this time, would the members of the Conservation Commission please introduce themselves, starting with Julie. Julie Roger, Recording Secretary. Rebecca Longley. Jamie Mullen. Anika Scanlon, Chair. Brian Sullivan, Vice Chair. Jeff Troni, uh, Conservation Administrator. Okay. And uh, Ryan, you're yeah. here on behalf of? Yeah, Georgia. Ill, so I'll be speaking on his behalf. My I'll keep it nice and short. Okay. Um, so we're all aware this is our general permit. We had a lapse, so we're coming back for our general permit to do all work on basically what DPW Highway Division does, so catch basins, culvert, stuff like that. It's, ju it's just highway. It's just it's just for the highway portion. Uh, water is covered underneath its own blanket order that has not lapsed yet due to the governor's um, extensions. So this one would just be for highway work. Um, all the stuff that we do when we, we're in the buffer zone or anything like that. I think in light of the response from DEP, um, like they were concerned, they had concerns about resource area work. So I think what we're gonna end up doing anyway is revising and resubmitting the NOI uh, just for work in the buffer zone. Um, and all work that's in the resource area will just file as separate NOIs when we come across them. So like ditch cleanings or culvert cleanings and stuff like that. Uh, okay. We'll address that way. Uh, remind me, was that MWRA work on West Street done under that was done, the highway? No, that, that work is done underneath the blanket order for the water the construction. Water. Okay. Okay. So they're still covered underneath that. They they went out to ours. So so, I don't know if you can give me sort of a sense of how you're gonna uh, sift through and. Well, we sort broke of it up in, We broke it up into categories. Yeah. When we went through, um, we yep. would probably just pick out the categories that work within the buffer zone. Just okay. Other categories that are in there, we'll just take those out and we'll just address those in a separate NOI when we go to do, if we have to do ditch clearing right next to a culvert, we'll address it separately. Okay. Um, that was DEP's concern anyway. I don't think we have a problem with just working in the buffer zone and getting the blanket order for that. I don't necessarily agree with DEP's comments, by the way. I, I question whether they even got the same document that I read. Um, I think the stuff that they're talking about I know this is speaking ahead, but the stuff that they talk, talked about in their notice, notice of intent is well under the, the thresholds for any of those filings um, that they mentioned, the DEP mentioned, 401 water quality certification. I mean, the stuff we're talking about here is much lower threshold. W was the, that Ipswich bridge work, was that done under this maintenance permit? That was state which, work, though. Which bridge work you referring to? Remember where they had to put that extra beam under the uh, Main Street yeah. Ipswich Bridge? At, at the North Reading. On 28? Route 28. Yeah, on 28. On that would have been 20. underneath the state. Right, okay. That was a state yeah. work, so they would have filed. They filed with us. Yeah. 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 That's what I was trying to yeah. remember. That was they the highway file. department. Yep, they filed with us. Yeah, I remember that. Okay. I, I mean, I also agree. I don't I don't think we filed. I, I, we I really, any yeah. Of the, the Army Corps or the 401. Well, um, I'm not thresholds. really addressing those, but you know the comment that they made about working in a resource area. And if you guys are willing to pull that out and file separately in a resource area, I'm certainly not going to complain about that. I mean, we wouldn't have a problem doing that. Obviously, we would like to have it, come, you know, for everything. Um, DEP did make the comment, so this is just our response to DEP's comment. Okay. I mean, they, you know, in, in the town has outlined that in those projects they were working on resource area, they would notify us. They tell us, hey, we right. want to do this work. Right. What, you know, the, what, what does the commission feel about this before they even do any work? And, right. and it sounds to me like a, a, a reasonable plan rather than having to come in if, they, if they're doing something every week, having to file a notice of intent and wait and kind of want to strike where the iron's hot. I mean, a lot of residents are very concerned about this, the, sta this, the state of our drainage ditches and if they want to clean them out let's let them clean them out 
You know, it's uh, within the regulations. We well, does this cover stormwater? It's, it's just storm water. This storm is water. only stormwater. Okay. If it's within the reg regulations, they should be allowed to do that. You know. It's, well. Well, let's, let's let some, them respond right, to right, the DEP's comments right, and CCS right. but, but on that. But just a question. There is drainage work that's not within the highways. Over there at Cross Street, for example. But we're not talking about highways. Well, I guess if it drains the highway, then, you know, as long as it's not too well, far out. DPW Highway does the work. Yeah. So this would be all the work that we maintain for the drainage system. Okay, so it would be more than just the, the highway. Right. I mean, generally speaking, uh -huh. this this permit used to only this permit really covered cleaning out catch basins in the buffer zone area, going maybe about 15 feet outside of a culvert area to cleaning out sediment right. that come, that builds up around right. the culvert. Right. Um, typically speaking, if we were to dredge a ditch, we would file. That's different. That's completely outside of the scope of, of, of this uh, regular maintenance. Yeah, how about, how about exactly. those trees that have grown up in the culvert over by the DPW garage? Would that the, be under this permit? Yeah, that would be underneath right. this permit. Not if you change it, though. <coughs> Not if you change it because it's in a resource area. Right. But, that but, was the original intent underneath this filing. Um, if you're comfortable... Well, that would be silly with if I was separate revising. permit to cut those trees. Well, down. exactly. I and I think if, if that's well, the case... they weren't cutting them down. They were pulling them out of the... They were ripping them out of the ground. They had grown right into the drainage yeah, right in front of the culvert. Are they gone? You and Bill looked at it, and I, I think did too. The commission was concerned about yeah. just allowing this work to happen. Yeah. I mean, that was the thought back then. But they came to us, though. They did. Right. So, in a situation like that, notification would be needed, but is a filing needed? Under this, they would have to notify us. Mm -hmm. We'd have to know exactly what they wanted to do before they could. They would do it. Under but they this. wouldn't have a separate filing. But it wouldn't be a separate filing. My concern is if they got to file separately for all this stuff, it's not going to get done. And, well, and, and that's you know, I just there are other things that you can be doing. You know, um, did you did you talk to the people from DEP? About no, this? this was just in response. Did you receive the letter from DEP? Their their comments. It was an email we received late yeah. today. <laughs> Yeah. Just handed it to you. Oh. Yeah, that, that's so. Yeah. This is just our response to DEP's concerns. Well, maybe you can just modify that. You can third certainly step. do that. Yeah, I mean, if you could settle, good to follow limit. DEP, but they're not gonna, you know, pull the keys away from the town if we don't. You know. Well, I can tell you, they do. I mean, if we you quite can, often have to clean out the, the culverts on both sides, of, and that's. That happens quite often. Yeah, and I, that's this, and this same permit with, should with probably with tree cover debris, that. You know, but that's damage. that's that's in a resource area. Correct, underneath what DEP comment was. Well, maybe you could limit it to, you know, include cleaning at the the culvert. And I and think I think if you read through in our. Um, been a while since I looked at it, but uh, we broke it down in categories, and it may already be broken down that way. It's very well, we can, well laid out. We can certainly take one of the categories that we think are outside that scope and take it out. Okay. But we're, we'll keep that that piece in. Yeah, any permanent alteration in the resource area, in, in, in any permanent alteration in the buffer zone, or any alteration in the resource area requires prior notification to the commission, not just, not just the administrator. Um, to the commission to get sort of consent for what the work they're going to do first before anything is done, unless of course it's an emergency, then it's a different category. And what you might slip in there too, if there's any uh, need for a uh, 401 work quality certification, that you would file a separate notice of intent. I, th I think any work that would, would require that anyway, we would file separately. Yeah, so maybe you I mean, could we wouldn't be that doing Underneath this maintenance, general maintenance permit, we're, we're not going to be doing right. anything that's going to require Maybe that. if you stuck that in there, it would satisfy DEP. Yes, we, we can do that. Yeah, that'd be good. You have, you, have a, you have one line in here, removal of naturally occurring dams. Mm -hmm. Can you expand on that a little bit? Uh, an easy example would be storm damage. So we have a tree that falls down. We don't necessarily know when it when it falls, but it does at some point create a, a blockage in the in the ditch, and then naturally occurring debris will start to block that up. Um, is it's similar to a beaver dam. Is a beaver dam a naturally yeah. occurring? Yeah, uh, we, we deal with those separately. We'll, we can deal with those. 
maybe maybe clarify yeah. that uh, naturally occurring dam. Yeah, because I have beaver dams question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, could just, we could just put something in there, uh, not to include beaver dam, but actually somewhat like the, the description that you had, you know, um, log jams, uh, stuff like that is or bank cave ins. Yeah, we can. Okay, any other questions from the commission? No? Any questions from the public? No? Okay. Um, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to continue this till, let's see, our meetings. 11. So move. Okay, March 11. Okay, second. Second. All those in favor? Okay, let's continue to March 11. All right. Good luck. Um, and so you're here to talk about the West Street pump station. Um, I need to read the script for that one as well. Do we have a notice of intent? File number 639. Certainly do. Oh, number. I don't know. 0639, of course. Sure. Um, the public hearing for uh, notice of intent 270-0639 West Street Public Station. Map 25, Lot 38, Reading Public Works Department Engineering Division is being opened and adopted concurrently under the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Reading General Bylaws, Section 5.7. The hearing will be conducted as follows. The applicant will present the proposal. The commission will receive reports from its administrator. Uh, technical advisors and other town departments. The commission will address questions and or comments to the applicant. The public will then be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the chair. Please give your name and address before your comments and or questions are presented. Uh, there's an attendance sheet at the um, entrance of the room. Please sign in. Um, and at this time, would the members of the Conservation Commission please introduce themselves, starting with Julie. Julie Roger, reporting second. Rebecca Longley. Jamie Mullen. Anika Scanlon, Chair. Brian Sullivan, Vice Chair. Chuck Throney, Conservation Administrator. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. Good evening. Lance, I'm from CDMC, and I will be representing the town. Well, the application. Welcome, Daniel. Could I ask a favor, just for sure. visualization ease here so the public can see, um, can I ask you to put that board over there? On the, yeah, there's. Sort of a pen tray oh, I under the pen tray, sure. Yeah, that way. Mm -hmm. um, we've got copies of these, so okay. Um, unless it's just okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So first, I will give you. Oh, to check. If you don't, don't mind, check. thank you. Oh. If it's cash, you give it to a neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. publicly handed it over, so I can then hand it to them. So generally speaking, this is a paper that you can see that is printed I have with me Elena Provella. She's the engineer on the project. So she'll go over the technical aspects of it, and then I'll go over the resource areas with you. Uh, so this project is being bid as part of the um, two pump station replacement projects, so it's Batch Elder Road and West Street together, and we did um, do wetland flagging in both locations, and Batch Elder, all of the work we're doing is outside the resource areas or buffer zones, so um, that's why you'll see on the plans, everything says West Street and Batch Elder Road on the title block and everything because it's being bid together. Um, both projects are locations of existing pump stations that are being replaced with new stations. They're aging, they have failing equipment. CDM Smith had done a um, assessment of all the pump stations in town. These are sewer pump stations, just to be clear. Um, and made recommendations on rehab or replacement for each station. And the engineering division decided to start with these two. Uh, West Street Station entails, right now it has and what we call an ejector station, which is a, a can, a steel can that sticks up out of the ground. You can climb down the ladder into it. And there are two pumps down there. There's also an emergency generator and an electrical panel. Those will all be removed. And then uh, the new station will consist of- These are submersible pumps? The new ones will be. But 
But the old ones. The old ones are not. They're these ejector pumps. The pneumatic ejectors. They have a compressor, and when the pots fill up, they push the push the wastewater out into the force field. Um, so the new stations will have two components: a wet well, a deep wet well, with two submersible pumps on rails for um, maintenance, and then an adjacent valve vault, which basically allows all of the valving and the items that you might that might require attention in the future, they all end up inside a six foot diameter concrete um, precast structure that's underground with you know, covers at grade or just above, um, which allows you much e easier maintenance than what you have right now. And um, these stations should last a long time into the future. And then there's some connecting piping, and we'll be connecting to the existing sewer force from the old station. So we won't be running a new force main out of the station. So I'll turn it back over to Danielle to talk do, about Do you have any idea um, how often, if ever, that generator is kicked in in the existing station? It's not often, right? Now. It's not So I, how long has it been since it was on the <coughs> end? A long time. Okay. Have we ever lost power in that? Oh, yeah. yeah. We've lost power. Does it overflow to the river? Nope. No. We, uh, what we'll end up doing is we either, uh, we either pump it down. Um, that one doesn't fill up, I don't think, as fast. Yeah. So uh, we have other ones in town that we really have to address when the power goes out. So when the power goes out, that wet well is up to the storage and the power comes back on. Yeah, and if it doesn't, then we, we address it with our <laughs> pump truck or we hook up the uh, portable generator and run it that way. Is there an overflow from that station? Generally speaking, we don't want them to overflow. I know. No, there's not a formal. There's no, no formal there's no, 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 overflow. But is there a physical? Overflow? No, the overflow would be when Coming the sewer starts. Well, when the sewer starts backing up, it would be whatever the lowest manhole is out in the collection system. That's where you would get. And that would be considered a CSO. We would have to file a. Uh, An SSO. SSO. Yeah. So that would be filed with DEP. Um, but the, the, this station was designed pretty generously for the flows that it actually sees. So um, it, it has extra capacity. So if there's a little, you know, short power outage. But the plan for the long term is going to be to have a, an electrical quick connect for a portable generator. And we're trying to standardize as we put in each of these replacement stations so that they all have the same hookup. And this one in Batch Elder will have the same size pumps, same horsepower. So you should be able to run them off the same portable generator. So there won't be a generator there. There will not be, be a, a portable generator that Ryan will deliver on site. <laughs> yes, Ryan will drive yeah. around with the generator on the back. Now, is the, um, I'm getting ahead of myself here, or ahead of somebody. Is the storage capacity in that wet well of the new station equal or greater than the storage capacity of the existing wet well? Uh, well, the existing. I'll have to check on that. With the with the pneumatic ejectors, it's a little different because it's not it doesn't work like a traditional wet well where you just have a high and a low and it you know kicks on and off. This is more like when it fills up, it pushes out. So it's and the pumps are 100 gallons per minute. So presumably, I don't know what size that well. I'm not really sure what that was sized for. Yeah. On that wet well. Yeah, and I'm not sure how much it's able to fill up. If no, the pumps aren't running, I don't know how much it's really going to fill up. Yeah, it's more just it going to push back into the collection system. Whereas the new design with the submersible station will have a traditional wet well with a high and low level sensor and also a high, high and low, low, uh, and low, low, low but a high, high. But if Ryan didn't get anything in time with this portable generator, the same thing would happen. It would back up in the system. And well, this this would have a little more capacity only because we're adding another. The wet well is going to be after what's currently kind of used as the wet well okay. for the ejector station. So you'll have that and you'll have the new location. But um, we're also going to have um, this is going to be connected to our SCADA system. So the mo monitoring is going to be a lot better than what we have now. I mean, we still have alarms that go off and we get phone calls. Um, but this is going to be tied right into our DPW uh, water and sewer supervisor's cell phone. As soon as it goes off, he's going to know. As soon as that first high level goes off, it's, we're going to know. And then that high high goes off. Um, so we'll have all those alarms that are, that are set in that way. Also, you didn't mention we ha we're going to have a disconnect um, so we're able to bypass pump, so we can pump directly out. So we have a machine 
we can bring out uh, our pump truck, we can pump, we can connect right up to that. And that pump, pump truck pumps it into the truck? That no, pump it into no. The we, can, we can also, we can decant that, we can use that truck, we can bring a pump. Um, so we have a lot of options on this new design that we do not have currently on the existing. Um, so what? we're able to disc, it, it's a quick disconnect and without having the detail for it. Um, basically, we'd have a hose that would go into the wet well, we'd have a hose that connect to the disconnect on the back side of our check valves and we'd be able to pump directly from there right bypassing our submersibles if one back went down. Back into the system. One back into the right back, in back, 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 back into the So that's what's lacking right up. now. Yeah. Your existing station has the ejector pumps and they pump right out into the force main and there's no place where you can connect into the force main downstream of the station if you had to bypass pump. You'd have to just bypass pump it to wherever the force main discharges, which would be a really long distance. I, is there a check or back backflow valve in the existing force main? I believe there is. I think yeah, it's it not back up in the station. There. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we have, they have check, check valves. These will have two, one. These will have check valves check on each discharge. On, on each discharge. Yeah. One, one more question while you're interrupted. You may be in here. Is there any kind of bar rack or you have to have? Are you collecting any floatables or anything in this pump station? We're um, designing around these flight pumps that have what they call their N impeller, which is supposed to be a, they call it non-clog, which you know, it doesn't mean that it never clogs, but it's supposed to be able to handle wipes and the issues that a lot of pump stations have <coughs> these days much better than your traditional impeller. Um, the town. It's very similar to a grinding pump, but it, it's not quite a grinding pump. Well, the, there's one that's kind of one step further mm -hmm. than we're going that has a chopper. And this doesn't right. have the chopper blade, but this has an impeller that has extra room so things don't wrap around it. Um, I think Peter Isabel said that you have these pumps already at, was it small? I think we do. We also have a grinder pump on Collins Avenue as well. But we, we do have an end series. Yeah, I think he's reported good experience mm -hmm. so far with that, yep. not clogging. So there's no no way to trap and go and collect any kind of solids or floaters? That's no, not the intent. And the hopefully it'll, 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 everything will go through the force. That's not to say that we we don't have emergency calls. We have we have them quite frequently. Um, and that's why we have a SCADA system, and that's why you have a means of knowing when, when these alarms go off. Um, but when we design them, we design them so we can minimize that to happen. <coughs> but that's not to say it's not going to happen. And we it's going to happen over the life of the time. Absolutely. We, we had a recent, um, we do what we call technical review committee meetings internally, and we just did one for this project on Friday, and we had one of our pump experts who happens to be out of our Detroit office. He had some really great suggestions on slight modifications you can make to the intake at, in the wet well in order to um, minimize getting big clogs of, of floatables in all at once and to keep things mixed. And so we're going to implement those ideas to, to try to minimize clogging. That's new information. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any more questions? I'll probably think so. Much. All right, I hope you do. <laughs> I hope you do. Any other questions from commission members? I've just seen some pretty ugly pump stations. Day, so <laughs> don't I need to. don't want to see one right down the street from me. Well, I can assure well, you, batch elder is far worse. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are, everything's going to be at grade um, or slightly above, I think you said six inches mm -hmm. on West Street. So um, you're not going to see, other than the panel, which will be above ground for sure, um, you're not going to see anything. It, it should be less of an eyesore than what's there now, and I don't think what's there now is much of an eyesore okay. because it's set back from the road. And um, so, all right. Anything else that you have? Yeah, I just um, I wanted to. I mean, I know you had mentioned you know the river is right there, so the areas that we would be working in, the the average on a river is here, and then the two hundred foot riverfront area does extend over past the pumping station. However, it's exempt work; it's associated with sewers. Three um, and then, so we are in the buffer zone, but um, the, dri the driveway that is associated and the two six-foot diameter pump stations would create about 670 square feet 
of new impervious area. So to mitigate for that, we created and integrated into the design these gravel trenches to mitigate the more the in increase in runoff from stormwater. So. I have some questions on that. What's the WP for this circle? I'm sorry? What's, the, what's WP in a little circle? That's probably the, the boring, the geotechnical boring location. Is it a? Oh, no, they're big. Oh, WP, I see. Yeah. I'm sure they're not boring. So. Oh. Um, Are they something to do with the, the uh, transmission line? Are those the poles? Do, do you think those are the poles? Because it's a pole yard. It's oh, an RMLD pole yard. Maybe. And so back in this area is where RMLD stores their poles, where there's a whole bunch of these WPs. Um, no, those could be well points. Yeah, that's a well point. From uh, from prior yeah. contamination of the site. Oh, oh interesting. Okay. RMLD yeah. had contamination yeah. on that site. Actually, it was on the site oh. they brought it there. Thank you. Can I have another question? Sure. Um, we don't have a power problem. You're, um, Weapons flags and, and generally your your delineation. You did that when? Uh, the delineation was completed by a. LDC. I personally did not complete it. One of our other wetlands. It was always did. It was completed yeah. in. No. Let's see. It was October or November. Yeah, it was. Oh. Yeah, it was October. Yeah. And this is kind October of fifteenth. Uh, kind of new to the commission again. I've been on it few times, but it's kind of a pet peeve of mine is, Chuck, well, why don't consultants send you the DEP, one of those forms, the sheets? That's the second one in this evening that they don't have those. I mean, do, were they sent separately or? They weren't sent separately. Um, we can request those. Yes. I would like to start as a general rule. I agree. It's a complete, then it's. It should be submitted with notice. Yeah. Absolutely. They should. So you want the field data forms? Yeah. The EP field data forms. You know. Do you have them? I don't have them with me. I can ask my coworker to provide Thank them you. and provide them to you. Sure. I have a question. I don't know if you can answer it or not, mm -hmm. but you've labeled this the Arbigeon River. Yep. The Arbigeon River also crosses West Street down at Willow Street. So there are actually two branches. It could of the be. Average on yep. And this has always been a question um, for the commission. I'm not sure that this branch would be considered a work. We, we did have that discussion. Uh, Andrew Poyant, who did the, the wetland flagging, said that this was essentially dry when he, when he flagged it. And I had posed the question, well, doesn't that make it an intermittent stream? And then it doesn't have a riverfront area. And he said that I believe it was on the USGS map it was shown as a, a perennial stream. And I ran stream sats on it, and it came up as it met and exceeded the thresholds to be considered perennial. So we considered it perennial for well, what to the What the issue is that through much discussion and and scientific engineering investigation and input from several lawyers, we determined that the Aboriginal River upstream of West Street, which this is, was not a river. And downstream of West Street, um, it was a river. So and yeah. so my concern is if we call, you might be 100 feet probably are from the downstream side but we don't the the upstream side is not a river now is it not even an intermittent stream oh it's an intermittent mm -hmm. stream and definitely would that's, does that still have inland bank associated? oh yeah it has inland bank it and then it still has a buffer zone right? it doesn't it have a buffer zone it just doesn't have a river from yeah so the so 200 foot associated buffer or boundary i should say that we have on here would not need would to not be applicable but all the 100 foot buffer zone work would still be mm -hmm. applicable. right oh absolutely okay. Okay. but and it would the, still the extend from is, here correct pardon me it would still be from here correct well that, that's i'm not sure because th since this since the average owner um, splits mm -hmm. um, 
then the drainage area of each side is less than the drainage area of the whole. But I don't know how you would calculate that because you don't know how to split it. Stats. Stats but my, my problem is if, if you call this on an official town document riverfront, then we're locked into that, and I don't think it is. So I know I what the regulations say. If it's on the USGS map, it's perennial, period. It doesn't say if it's on the USGS map and you can prove that it's otherwise. It says if it's on the USGS map, it's perennial, period. It's well, shown as perennial. That's what they did then on the, uh, at the other side. They went and calculated the um, drainage area. Yeah. It was less than the minimum. And even though it's on the USGS <coughs> map, their attorney convinced our attorney still wasn't really I know that it's been interpreted that way, but if you carefully read the regulations, you don't get to that point unless you get past the USGS statement. They, they ruled otherwise. I would agree with you, but they ruled and otherwise. So I understand this has history. And we told, I've been called for, to task on that. For example, we told Austin Prep that it was not riverfront, and they didn't have to comply with riverfront. So if for equal treatment, we shouldn't call this. I, I agree. Front. I agree. But just to be careful as we go forward, right? Um, I looked at it very closely because I had to. <laughs> Can I ask if you had conversations with DEP about that? If I, I'm just curious if I move forward with with what was your wishes by not calling it Riverfront. Well, I mean, DEP certainly saw those applications yeah. where it was determined it was not Riverfront. Okay. I don't remember talking to them specifically. I will yeah, you dry, that's the precedent, you, you know. I, I've yeah. seen it dry too. It was dry. The pictures I provided pictures in the appendix B and it's extremely dry. And even when I went to the coworker and I discussed this with him, because I you know, after he had come back into the field I investigated whether or not it was perennial and I did the USGS map and it showed a perennial on the USGF map USGS map and I also mapped it from this point. And the watershed came up as greater than, or the you know the, the watershed. Yeah, but that assumes all that watershed drains to this point, where we know less than half of it drains at that point, more mm -hmm. than half of it drains sure. across yeah. the Grand Willow Street. Mm -hmm. So when I talked with him about it, he said it, he was very surprised because it's extremely dry. He yeah. said there was hardly even a defined river channel there. Well, that's so I can why, understand where you're coming from in that because aspect. It's split, sure. The flow is split. Yeah. That stream right there probably only drains from Austin Prep. Probably the only drain area for this particular town. Okay. So, can we make a suggestion to, to take off the riverfront area? Yeah, I would suggest yeah. that we do. That. Sure, we can do that. For, for that portion. Yeah, for that portion. That piece. Just, just upstream. Upstream okay. as well as uh, west stream. So, in that case, would we wrap it around from the. Wrap yes. it from here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it would okay. wrap Are you in agreement? Yeah. Is, what, what's the distance? Is that this less than 200 feet, right? Across the street? Oh yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, so we can wrap it around. I I'm not familiar as familiar as Jamie is with all the splitting and you know basin dimensions and, and all that of the average owner. So um, I, I just I don't have anything really to contribute about it. I'm just relying on his I, memory I had, and expertise. I had a similar area. situation where I actually did the application. I was being conservative like you you were, but the commission said, oh, it's I mean, not. Front and DEP said, it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in practice, I, I saw those pictures. Um, I, You know, granted, those pictures were taken in October, so that's a dry time of the year. Mm -hmm. So if it's going to be dry, any time is going to be dry when those pictures are going to be taken. So. Um, Four days. Yep. Um, so I guess I don't have any comment about that. Um, any other questions from the commissioners before I get to my list? No? Okay. Um, um, I just wanted to, one comment I wanted to make was I was grateful to see the, um, the Cornell data used for, for the rainfall amounts. Um, um, and it was it was interesting. There was a description that said, um, you know, that the Cornell rainfall amounts were used as a um, conservative estimate. I, it, from my perspective, they're more a realistic estimate than conservative. It's it's uh, a better set of data. So I was happy to see that. Um, 
The erosion control looks like it's going to be placed between the 35 and 25 foot line. Uh, why, what's the reason for that? Um, why in that area? Now, it looks like, according to the plan, the, um, the, let's see, north, the southern fence is, line is going to stay intact. Is, did I, am I reading that right? The, so fencing, the fencing will need to be removed um, in, you know, certain areas, depending on how they need to access. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is, yeah. Right, to so the, yeah. to so the they, street side. So it seems side. as though they would need to take that out and then replace it. Okay. Um, you know, what's the scale on this now? One to twenty. Um, I I don't know if, if that's I, I couldn't exactly tell when I drove past there today just to get sort of a visual on this on this site, but um, you know I like to see the limit of work line as close to the project a area as need as possible. <coughs> just to, but I I don't think <coughs> I just it's not a it's not a do you mean uh, major limit, comment. limit of work? The erosion the control. The erosion control. The erosion control. Okay, sure. Um, how, how about, Anita, how about if, if they placed a um, orange fence as close to the limit of work as possible to keep people from driving around, but keep the, I, where we can, the erosion control, that gradient a little bit is better, I think. Sure. That would keep any activity well away from the wetlands, yeah. but still allow that natural area before I, it gets the erosion control. Uh, two things about that. I don't know the ground cover in that location, so I don't know. It's hard to tell with the snow today. Yeah. So, um, And it it's, looks like the erosion veg, control is tied in and then rolled out matting. Is that right? I'm sorry. That, what's the erosion control? It's matting, isn't it? It's the straw bottles. Oh, is it straw bottles? Yeah, I guess straw it was. Models. Did, did you mean to put a schematic for that? On, oh, there. C4? Did I mean, I'm sorry. Did you? Well, the paper crunching. Sorry. Did you? See, I thought you were talking about that's where the straw waddle detail on this page. Yeah, I was confused between the top of the detail being. Straw waddle? Yeah. Which is the straw waddle, eh? Oh, yeah. Okay, got it. It's another name for a straw waddle. Because I was looking at detail B. Not straw waddles of everything? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um, then where would the erosion control blanket be? Well, um, we could put it above or below, depending on if what you guys were thinking, but probably below. Necessary? Yeah, I'm wondering. It's not even necessary. Okay. I'm not sure. I, I think maybe the, the compost sock detail. I imagine with the slope there, it should, that should be. Let's see. It's not a. It's not a. It should be sufficient. Um, yeah, it's a large flat. slope. Yeah, it's yeah. very flat. Just the side roll would really be what we would use. So, what's the consensus of the commission? That detail A, the compost sock is probably compost sufficient. You, you don't need the erosion control blanket. Correct. I'm not familiar with the construction of these um, pump stations, so just bear with me to sort of educate me about this. So the emergency generator, as Jamie alluded to, it's currently on the site. Is it is it open to the elements? Is it? It is. It's sitting on, on a concrete pad, and it's just in a case. OK. But that's going to be taken out, and um, and as you were saying, the, the power supply to activate any overflow, any sort of need necessary additional pumping is going to come from, from a port service to a port. Okay. So no gasoline or anything is going to be stored on site or um, like that. Okay. What is the reason for the gravel around the valve fault and wet well? Well, initially, so it, it started out that before we relocated the driveway, um, we had a tiny increase in impervious area just from the covers of the of the um, mm -hmm. 
the two structures. And so we hadn't gone through the whole stormwater analysis because it was such a minor area. We said, let's just put some gravel around. Then to increase to increase infiltration. Right. Then as it got further along and, and we met with the town and they had a desire to you know, have the driveway wrap around, have better access to both of the chambers than how we were going to originally leave the existing driveway, but then it would restrict access to the two chambers. It would potentially make it so when you plowed snow, you were plowing in right into the, <laughs> the pump station, which obviously you don't want to do. Right. Um, so that's when we ended up having our drainage engineer do the, the full drainage analysis and she came up with this gravel trench along the driveway. But in the meantime, when we were talking more about the pump stations internally, I've had an experience where a pump station went in. Um, this one was more at grade. This has a little lift, so it wouldn't be as much of a problem. But sometimes when you get a little settlement over time and the, you know, the grade ends up going down towards these stations, you can get ponding right on top of the actual patch to the, to the wet well. And, and then you can also get infiltration into your pump station through that. So we thought, well, these gravel trenches provide some nice infiltration right around the two structures. Now yeah, that we have them, let's, let's just settle. keep them. Yeah. 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 So, so that okay. was our thought. Um, they're, okay. not, they're not there now to provide anything in particular from a um, meeting stormwater standards perspective. Okay. Um, just curious, how deep is that wet well? Uh, generally like speaking. Yeah, it's deep. 20, 20, 20, 25 plus. 25 wow. feet? Yeah. Wow. And so they're looking at... And it's fully sealed, fully contained. It's, it's a it's a precast manhole, basically, six feet in diameter. It's installed in sections with gasketed joints. How many gravity sewers flow into that well? Just one. Just one. If there are two gravity sewers that come into this station from two different directions. One comes kind of along the river from cross country, and the other comes down West Street. But they join up in the existing wet well manhole. And we're going to leave that manhole in place, and then it will pipe from there into the new wet well. Um, so it will just be one connection into the, the new structure. Okay. Um, I wonder why you have pump chamber. Yeah. Okay. The valve vault is much more shallow. It's something like seven feet deep. Okay. Um, during this, um, during and or after refurbishment, is there any chance for leaks or um, you know, dis wastewater? Yeah. Highly, I mean, I cer certainly not after construction. This should be a very tight system. There should yeah. be no, no chance of leaks. During construction, when we're doing the bypass pumping, because there will be, we're going to leave the existing station online as long as we can while we put the new station in. But at some point, there's going to have to be bypass pumping to switch over. Yeah. Um, you know, the contractor shouldn't be making mistakes with bypass pumping, but I can't say that it's completely outside the realm of possible. I may go with a wet well 20 feet deep as well below the groundwork table. If there are any leaks, they're going to be in. And that yeah, be that's yeah. true. Yeah. And um, that all gets vacuum tested and everything, okay. pressure tested. Okay. Um, I see that there's, you know, there's sewer lines um, that kind of continue into the RMLD property. Um, yeah, those away are from the road. Existing. Any additional excavation going to happen outside of? The mm -hmm. fenced area? No. No, because no. we're leaving that in a place where those two pipes come okay. together. Okay. Um, the excavation, just as an aside, I, I think we put it in the NOI, is plans to be um, a 12 by 12 trench box um, sheeting. Mm -hmm. That's what our, we did a soil boring and our geotechnical engineer said based on the information. Um, groundwater was seven or eight feet below the surface when the boring was done. But because of the time of year, the geotechnical engineer said to assume groundwater to the surface for any dewatering system that gets designed. Yeah. And the contractor will be um, submitting on the dewatering system. In the notice of intent, there was mention of an infiltration basin. But I didn't Is see any of that on the plan. Is that for dewatering? Is that what that's referring to? I'm not sure. Let me see if I can. I was just curious as to what that was or where that was. Long infiltration trench. Yeah, I, it's I'm either in reference to the gravel trench. trench, or it's in reference to, or it's um, a reference to the mitigation measures for dewatering, maybe. Yeah. yeah, and that wouldn't be in our design plan because no. that would come from the submittal from the from the shop. Okay. Okay. So. okay. 
the, the whole dewatering would come from the shop going to the, to the contractor? We include a dewatering specification that has some tight requirements, but the system design comes from the con usually a specialty subcontractor to the GC. Chuck, we want to make sure we saw the shop drawings and that design before um, before, um, before engineering okay. approved them. Yeah. I, I mean, with the concom, not just right. engineering. Right. right. Which yeah, didn't that's quite happen on West Street. If that's in the order of conditions, we would also include the order of conditions in the specs, so the contractor should. Okay. Um, there's one other thing I just thought I'd bring it up because um, I noticed it. So the infiltration trench, uh, the TSS removal rate that was claimed um, on the worksheet said 80% um, removal um, of suspended solids. Um, but back in the DEP stormwater handbooks said that 80% could be claimed provided it's combined with adequate pretreatment, like a sediment forebay or vegetated filter strip, grass channel, water quality, swale, prior to infiltration. Uh, you know, in this situation, it's such a small project. Um, this is not a regularly driven road. Um, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't think that was um, something that necessarily needed to be strictly adhered to. So, um, because you're, you're putting in, what, a three foot by two foot um, Trench. Yeah, the gravel yeah. trench. trench is almost as big as the road. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. The um, and I assume that snow storage would be kind of at that towards the end of the roadway, or to the right. Maybe to the right. If it got too, if it got too much, we'd send a loader down to clear it out. I we just don't, we I don't want large piles of snow near a pump station anyway. Do you clear out inside the fence right now? Uh, currently, right now, yeah, they, they, they shovel and plow it out. Right now, was, we. There was a lump, you know, there was. Right now, we have the same problem that we'd be having. We're trying to correct an issue that we're having now. I mean, we don't want guys going out and having a shovel all the time. If we can plow most of it out, that's right. what we're going to do. Right. Um, it just reduces injury, um, ease of access. A lot of times, if we have to get through it really quick, and these will fail during a storm. You know, we want to plow it and get to it. So, so that, so the other yeah, driveway, it looks like um, the end of the driveway is going to be inside the fence, right? Or is right. that? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So right. you're going to have to drag that that out with the plow, right? You have to drag out no, the we snow. Would do, if we had to remove, if we had to do snow removal, we would do it with a front end loader. We would drive in, load it up with a with sure. loader. Pull it out, dump it into a dump, and then take as many loads out as we need to. Okay. And the way it's shown right now, with with a normal year, you would probably be able to just plow it to the end of the driveway and you know not have a giant amount of snow mm. that required. Yeah, this isn't like a roadway either. It, it's not going to see sand and salt. Right. It's not going to see your regular no, road right. deposits. Um, any other questions from commission members or Chuck? Did you have any other questions? I only came up with one. Um, it's snow storage was one of them. But uh, what size was the uh, mulch stock? Uh, what is, does it say on the detail? It's on the detail. I, I don't know. I didn't see it. Oh, no. Does that say on the detail? Not sure. Composite socks. So not, not eight inch, right? It should be five inch. Five inch? Yeah. Mulch sock. Yeah. Should be yeah okay. We can do that. Um, 12 inches? Yeah. 12 or 8 again. Yeah. Because they flatten out pretty easily. Okay. Um, well, this is the mulch, not the straw. Yeah, they flatten out pretty easily. They, a 12 inch can easily become an 8 inch um, barrier over time. Okay. I think, so it's, uh, yeah, so 12 inch, and, um, and then, uh, you know, what's, is there a stockpile area? Do you guys have that noted on the plan that I missed? So we were digging things out. We, we haven't specified where the, where the staging area would be for the contractor. There's a lot of land there with the RMLB yard. Um, but, but the excavated material will be hauled outside, right? 
Should it be tested in the hall ball side? Uh, I was just thinking about that. Oh, well, that's where I was going to. What's been happening to this material on this site? Yeah, the majority of the material will probably be hauled off site because it's a deep excavation and the, the wet well's going in in that location. So it's not like they'll need that fill for backfilling. Um, to protect the town, you might want to put, this is not necessarily a conservation issue, you might want to have um, uh, testing and inspection for the soil provision in the contract. Um, only because, unless it's in the standard terms and conditions, maybe not, but um, this site has history. They supposedly cleaned it all up, but you know how that goes, subsurface stuff, so um, that probably should be in the special provisions. I think we discussed that at one of our meetings, too. I think so, yeah. So, yeah, we will include that. So we want them to you want to test it, no? We'll just test it when they take it out to make sure that there's, you know, nothing. I think, if I remember correctly, well, it was PCBs down here. Well, the, the was it in, the soil. in the soil. Yeah, I think it was. But being a former energy, like yeah, that wouldn't be too surprising. Yeah. Um, you could just put in something to the effect of, you know, any soil trucked offsite is will be appropriately tested for disposal parameters. And I was. <coughs> the manifests from the where it's disposed of. Um, and you might want to look into the extent of excavation and post-excavation sampling at uh, the neighboring site. <coughs> yeah. Um, we do PCBs, they take special care for that. Um, any other questions from commission members? Um, any questions from the public about this project? You're not here for this project, okay. Um, Hearing none, I'll, um, yeah, just one more. It has yeah, nothing okay. to do with anything. But is NWRA paying for any of this, Ryan? No. <laughs> no this this isn't technically part of their collection system. Yeah, but sometimes if we claim we're moving infiltration and flow, you can get a grant and they'll pay for part of it. Uh, yeah, well, we we take credit for that underneath other projects. This in particular is not the capital improvement. Okay, um, is there um, entertain a motion on this project? Whether it's continue or approve or close? I move we issue, um, no, did we want to close the hearing first? Well, let we me could close it. With, let well, me start with this, then we'll deal with the hearing. I, I, I move we, uh, you don't have an order for this, we, right? We did ask for a couple of things, and I don't have yeah. an order. Right. Okay, so, so I'm not continue. sure. You know, so we should you want to continue. Well, what's the sense of commission? Well, I, do we I need think to we ought to approve it. Or do we do we have? Do, do, are they going to be able to give us the information that we've asked for that's sufficient to close the hearing now? I think so. Does so anybody else feel? The additional information we asked for were the wetlands forms. I, right. I think it would be good to have. And those. you said you have them. Yeah. Yeah, um, and just changing the, the plan to take up the riverfront area and loop the, and the, the spec. Yeah. Um, so take out the erosion control matting and the mats and, the mats. and make right. the straw wattle 12 inches. Compost wattle. Compost. I would suggest that we vote tonight to um, to issue an order of condition. So we approve the issue of the order based on the changes, and then Chuck gets a, a draft to us before the next meeting. But we don't close the hearing because you're when did you, did you plan to issue the bid document? Uh, probably end of March, beginning of April. So there's no rush there, so we can close the hearing when we approve the order of conditions. That right. gives us a little more time. Right. So I move that we issue order of conditions for the changes that we. Um, that we've uh, discussed. That we issue, um, can I modify that? And, and, sure. Um, request that we move that we issue an order of conditions um, upon receipt of the modifications mentioned tonight. Sure. Okay, and a Chuck, second? If, if you Does that mean a second? 
Yes. Exactly okay. So. okay. All those in favor? Okay. And if you could give us a draft before the next meeting, Chuck, even, I mean, even if it doesn't happen in two weeks, if it has to be in four weeks, just so we have a draft to review before we have to actually sign. Four weeks? I mean, it's nice to get it in two weeks, but. Uh, if you can't, the meeting, the, the, the hearing. You just continue it? Right, we're going to continue it. Okay. So, Why don't we continue it? Um, I move we continue it to March 11th. Is that sufficient? Okay. Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Okay. We have kicked it down the road. Hopefully we'll get it wrapped up at the next meeting. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I do. I do, actually. Yeah, I do. Excuse me. I don't know why this would happen. the request for determination of applicability 2015-2 for 40 Glenmere Circle. Mr. Willett. Good evening. Hi. How are you? Good. Um, it's important to add after the fact. Yes, I, okay. I stopped um, oh. off at the property today. Yeah. Um, I appreciated. Gone. Huh? They're gone. They're gone. Those trees are gone. This is an after posthumous um, RDA. Um, so how did the removal go of the two pines? My, my understanding it was basically the last day that they could have done it before all the snow started. So it could have um, come at a better time um, after reading the emergency request. So, yeah. And what happened to all the wood? Did they remove all that? Yeah, they chipped it and it's all all. Removed. All removed and they ground the stumps. Uh, is that no, what you mean by the stumps? Still. The stumps oh, okay. Because okay. uh, that was a second. We would have had to file another notice to get that removed, I think. But okay. I think we just had the permit to remove the trees, not the stumps. So you have two I large trees. I think I know the answer to this, but the trees are already gone, yet you have pictures of the trees. Prior. Because we, we had assumed we weren't going to, you know, do the emergency. So you just happened so to have these pictures, or you took this picture in anticipation no, of removing to, the trees? He took the pictures. All, everything was in anticipation of removing the trees, and I was actually ran the process by Chuck. And it was interesting. We, we wanted this removed last year, so about six months ago, we were saying, okay, let's go through this. Let's see what we have to do decided that, okay, maybe now is not the right time. And then a branch of the tree fell in our neighbor's backyard, and we said, okay, prepared everything, including taking the pictures and that stuff. And just kind of in the process of doing that, I said, well, I'm not exactly certain what to fill out because, I, you know, I, I couldn't determine if it was in the buffer zone or, or where it actually stood in relation to anything protected. So that's when we reached out to Chuck, and he said, you know, follow this process. There's also the emergency thing. If you get Northeast Tree to look at it, or you know, certified, I don't know, probably like that. Or yes, I didn't want to go that far. I didn't want to speak out of turn. But um, and they come with the determination that it needs to be removed. Then you know, you got to submit that right away. So obviously, I hadn't heard that. I said, okay, well, we got to call them and see what's going on with their write-up, which I think is in the package. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And then it should also be included in the emergency form. I don't know if you have that as well. That's, I mean, obviously after that point, it was like, okay. So do you happen to know uh, the date that it was actually, that these were removed? Was it Yeah, it was, it was, I think, the next day, the, the 29th? Probably Friday. Then. Third? Oh, January. January. Oh, the 23rd? January. Yeah, it was, it was like, they, they made it immediately right after. 
It was the 25th. Okay, so and that if if we had if we'd had a meeting, uh, a first meeting in February, we would have discussed it then. Yeah. That's what I understand. Yeah. Friday. Yep. Okay. Um, I'll tell you, those were some pretty sad looking trees before they took them down. Yeah. Oh, you you saw them? Yeah, I see them right here. Oh. Okay. Yep. Yeah, they 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 are not long for this place. That's for sure. Okay. Yeah, so Close this. I'm going to add a little bit to it. So, yeah, I had known about this project for about a year and urged the applicant to come into the commission a couple of times. Um, and, you know, the process is foreign. It's not an easy process for, for people to follow. And it was, you know, it was going on its way. And then a storm came. And I think I was called out prior to that to, to evaluate them again. And then the storm came and broke off, mm. basically, half, half the tree, tree on yeah. one side. And then Northeast Tree said, it's imbalanced, mm -hmm. I'll take yeah. that down. And because of that, the pathway to the next tree is suspect. Mm -hmm. And my, you know, Northeast Tree uh, certifying that this thing's a problem. These, they were very close to the house. And it, it basically destroyed this, the uh, play structure. Did anyone see a picture of that? I think I sent no. pictures around. Yeah. But this play structure in the neighbor's yard, which was about 10 feet from the house, this huge limb fell on it. So pretty much at that point, um, we really had to make a decision prior to the storm. Yep. So the emergency permit was put out there and um, allowing them to do the work. And I just said, let's have the commission have an opportunity to um, discuss what they would do after the fact as far as any uh, planting or whatnot to compensate for what's happened here. I, th I think they're far enough outside of the buffer zone. I'm, I'm fine with just the removal. They're not that far. This is a misleading map. I think they're only 25 feet. Not 60 feet? I don't know how much. Drainage easement. Oh, right. Yeah, I was actually just looking at that. I don't know how it, I, I don't know what's most appropriate if you're looking at. I think it comes way up on, on their yeah. side. Um, yeah. The, the yeah. best yeah. I Almost in from. back of where that shed is. Oh, yeah, that looks like an intermediate stream going across the uh, back yeah. property line. So both those property comes right up into that green area if you're looking at the uh, my maps. <laughs> did, did you anticipate doing some planning? In that area? Yeah, I mean, we knew that as soon as we, you know, as soon as I was looking at the form, I said, okay, well, obviously, <coughs> we can't just take this down. So mm -hmm. that's why I, even talking with Chuck, it was basically like, yeah, we we wanted to get the trees down out of the safety. So whatever you think is appropriate, we'll just do. Planning is fine. Yeah, I, I'd like to uh, suggest planning a, a couple. Tree for tree? I was I was gonna um, small one, you know, four six feet. Four feet. I would also entertain the the idea of shrubs instead. Um, I know there's a lot of trees back there already. Um, but um, I how about if we left it up to the applicant to decide either shrubs or white pines. They are white pines. They were white pines. They were white pines. Yeah, although yeah. like for like is the most reasonable. Rebecca, what's your um, I can opinion? go either way. I mean, the white pine does provide habitat. Yeah. yeah. Sure. But shrubs could be too. Oh. You too? Yeah, I think, I think the homeowner should decide if their yeah. property um, they, you know, they okay. may like the extra sunlight now. Uh, maybe they don't. Um, white pine is, is a fast grower. I'll just. We, we planted we plan right now four. <laughs> four, maybe five white pines in our yard over the last 30 years, and some of them are now 25 feet high, 20 feet high, really? mm -hmm. and in this snowy weather, look at there and see something green with the drill lights. Yeah. <laughs> <Just> yeah. <amazing. laughs> but whatever you, whatever you want. Okay. So, Mr. Bullard, what, what would you, do you want to commit to <laughs> something here and now, or do you want to get back to us, or? We don't uh, have to. I mean, it's up to you. I should probably consult. 
Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you, you well, I, I don't think I have the authority to make that determination. I know you're talking about How long are you married? <laughs> <laughs> Three years. How much longer do you want to be married? <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, so it sounds like we're asking for, you know, two plants, uh, sure. shrub or larger. Yep. Um, it, I think closer to the resource area, closer to the easement. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, that's kind of interesting. We could or wherever is fine, yep. obviously. I find it really interesting that, you know, I couldn't, I can't determine what is where, obviously. I, I certainly have no background for that, but in the process of looking through this, it's basically like, I have absolutely no idea. Like, I have no idea. So I would have needed the, the where request the for determination. Was. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Are we going to actually I draft this, or is this under an emergency? It's actually drafted. I didn't put this together, but I do have the emergency permit. I'd like you to ratify. Okay. I move. And then it's planning. It obviously can be done in spring or summer. Okay. We, we don't yeah. want you to Don't do it now. <laughs> okay. In the 2015 appropriate planning season. Yeah, I move. We <laughs> My new, you'll see that come up. <laughs> should we vote on this? I don't know if they did vote. We should vote on this. I, I move we approve this emergency certification. A second. Okay, all those in favor? So you can just let Chuck know what you yeah. decided to do. Okay. So this, yeah. and that's also going to be native, mm -hmm. native plant. So yeah. You no know, ornamental. Something. Japanese not women. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> so it's cheap though. You can get a lot of that. You've got a neighbor across the street who knows plants pretty well. Okay. Um, but Chuck also has a list. Who, who is that? I'm familiar with um, um, Catherine. What is, oh gosh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a name um, name moment Sue here. Sue Fitzgerald. Thank you, yep. Sue Fitzgerald. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, but if you need other plant ideas, you can talk to Chuck. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Great. All right, thanks. Do you have a, a say, list in town? Oh, oh, am I? I, I hope not. not. No, you're not. Approved plants. There. Okay. Like when someone picks Abervite, we pick that again for, you know, six or eight months. Yeah. Okay. I think it was not by how many people use it. Okay. Notice of intent for Whittier Road. Let's see. Is this another thing maybe we would have gotten to earlier this month? So um, let's open the public hearing for. Um, I'll assign a number to this. How about that? No, it has a number. 060. No. 0640. 0640. Yes. Yes. For notice of intent, DEP number 270 0640. Um, is now opened, so that's 30 Whittier Road, map 30, lot 141. Um, Mr. Johnson is now being opened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Reading General Bylaws, Section 5.7. The hearing will be conducted in the following manner. The applicant will present the proposal. The commission will, re will receive reports from its administrator, technical advisors, and other town departments. The commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. The public will be then given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the chair. Please give your name and address before your comments and or questions are presented. There's an attendance sheet at the entrance. Please sign in. Um, and at this time, would the members of the Conservation Commission please introduce themselves, starting with Chuck. Um, Chuck Taroni, Conservation Administrator. Brian Sullivan, Vice Chair. Anika Scanlon, Chair. Jamie Moore. Rebecca Longley. Julie Roger, Reporting Secretary. Okay, Mr. Johnson. Nice to meet you. Good evening. My name is Dave Johnson. I'm, Welcome. I'm, I'm buying uh, property on 30 Whittier Road, and I'm here tonight uh, to seek your approval in order to tear down the existing uh, structures and to put up a new one. Uh, the, the project uh, is entirely within the buffer zone which is uh, 
almost up to the street. Uh, most importantly, the, most of the work that uh, comes close to the wetlands is the demolition of the project. Um, there's a garage that's uh, right up against the, the uh, wetlands flags, and there's also a sump pump which discharges into the wetlands, which uh, I'd like to remove. Can you, can I interrupt just for a quick yes. second? I'm sorry to interrupt, but can you please just, I, di I didn't see that sump pump discharge on the plan. No, okay. um, can you sort of indicate where that sump pump discharge starts w at the house and where it goes yep. to in the wetland? In light blue is, is the existing structure and driveway, and it's probably 10 feet in. Um, it comes underneath the, um, you can see the stairs coming up to uh -huh. the existing stoop in the back. Yep. It comes underneath that and straight out into the wetland. Where does it daylight? Does it? Uh, it right, out, right out here, it, uh, just past the wetland flags. Thank you. Oh, okay. It is pretty much a straight shot. It's pretty much a straight shot, so I'd say it's it's, it's really near wetlands uh, flag number four. Okay, just a little bit left of it. Um, uh, east. A little bit to the to the right of it, actually. Oh, would, to the I right say, of it. I would say yeah. So somewhere between the stairs and the proposed deck? Yep. Okay. Right. I just wanted to get a sense of that. So I didn't see it. Okay, thank you. In, Go ahead. In order to, to do that, uh, I'm asking the commission, that, and I mentioned in the waivers, that the, um, the edge of the existing lawn, which is the edge of the green right here that, I, that I'm, I'm showing you, um, be made the, the line where I put my siltration fence, um, that, that will obviously facilitate taking down this garage as well as uh, taking up that, that sump pump line. Um, so I was hoping uh, that the commission would see their way to uh, allow me to do that. The new house is going to be basically where the old house is. Um, the, the, um, there is a 30 foot deed restriction in this neighborhood. All the houses have to be 30 feet back. Uh, the existing one was a little bit off of that, but I believe uh, was Brian left to back me up on this, but I believe there was a taking, and so when they did the sidewalk, the grass strip or something at some point, so it actually is closer, but I, I'm still held to that 30 feet. You can't get any closer to the street than I, that, that 30, 30 feet. feet. It's That's a deed it. restriction. Yes. Okay, gotcha. So uh, the, the structures, the new structure is actually less than the old structures combined. However, I am putting a, a garage under, so the impervious area of the driveway is greater. So in order to, an, another um, step uh, that I would like to propose mitigating is to take all the runoff from the roof, which goes to the back of the lot, and put it into a shea shallow pit, that, which is a concrete structure, eight feet by five foot two by two foot eight deep. And what you, I, I've done them before, you typically excavate a foot and a half or so around it, you lay the, the ground with a siltration fence and place the, the pit in, surround it with uh, crushed stone, which actually gives it a little more volume, too. And then it's an open bottom, bottom, right? It's an open bottom. A leaching gallery. Correct. They sometimes call them, I'd say, shorter, too. Right. And, and you actually wrap the, the structure itself so the stone doesn't go yeah. in. So, um, so, so that would be placed over here. So that back gutter line would be uh, guttered into, into that. The front of the roof would, would um, pitch towards the street, and the grade would be changed in order that that pitch would be made. And the, the benefit there is, in the present condition, everything goes to the back of the lot. Uh, over 2,000 square feet of impervious all goes to the back of the lot. In the, in the new proposed scenario, it will only be the driveway. So there's actually almost 900 less square feet of impervious area that pitches towards the wetlands. The rest would go to the street and then to the correct and stormwater. Yes. System. So this obviously the, to the street, the back of the house, to the um, to, to the uh, Shea Shallow Pit, and the driveway would go towards the uh, towards the wetlands. So there is a catch basin there in Whittier Street. Yes, there there is uh, there's a drainage. Um, I don't I don't know exactly where it is, but there is a, a drainage system there. I know that when I was, um, when I was going over my grades, the other uh, benefit that I would like to mention is with the, doing the garage under, I'm raising the grade of the house up, and 
it will be the, the new house uh, will be at about 211 and a half where the old one was at about uh, the old existing basement was at uh, 209 uh, therefore I'm not going to need a sump pump in this house um, I think a lot of I don't have a count for you but I believe a lot of people on Whittier and Tennyson have some pumps and a lot of them have been allowed to tie into the already overtaxed town drainage system so I mean that's just one benefit there that this this um, property will not have to do that it'll be it'll be up high enough and the the um, the, the, sh the shallow pit too will be placed one foot higher than the existing uh, basement floor which is 209 so that the bottom of the shallow pit will be at 210 and right now there is a sump pump in the existing structure um, it's in a pit so so it's in a pit 15 inches to the bottom from the 209 uh, I, I gave it a little test it, it goes on uh, when the ball ball gets up about 10 inches so um, obviously it's it, it, the, the had uh, groundwater issues there before because it has it has gone on there's a little bit of evidence that there might have been three four inches of water in that basement um, there is a, a proposed deck the deck will be slotted in uh, uh, gravel stone which is uh, you know pervious underneath it um, so I'd like to mention uh, I just want to mention that also this this is a blown up version of the purple and the yellow that you see is um, is a, a wetlands planting that I asked uh, the guy, the people by the way uh, was LEC who did the wetlands um, flagging. Um, it was both hydric soils as well as uh, wetlands plants, and that is that line was, as you can see, is not far from the existing um, edge of lawn. The existing edge of lawn is pretty defined. It it you know it drops right down. Um, it would appear, uh, and I don't, I don't know, if Chuck, if you or any of you saw it before the snow was there, but um, you know the lawn is right at the edge, and then it drops right down to the wetland area. So, but these plantings here, he's proposed uh, a total of 79 plants. I, I, I include this blown up because it just shows all the plants and what they are. They're um, the New England wetlands plants. Uh, I know there's a pl I know I can get them. There's a place out in Amherst, a nice little drive <laughs> to to go get them. But um, so those those 79 plants will be put in here, and, and he cites in his um, in Exhibit C, which is his write up. He he's, um, cites you know many reasons why that's a positive for the wetland. We, I'm also um, proposing uh, to put in, which I'm sure you guys would make me do anyways, is the wetlands markers. Um, bounds. Big con concrete bounds with your sign on them. Yeah, great. Okay. Anything else you want to highlight before we ask, 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 ask questions? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no, okay. I'm, I'm ready for any questions. Okay. Anybody else have questions? Go ahead, Rebecca. Um, what's the what's the existing impervious now, and what is the proposed? Uh, I'm going to give the exact number. The, uh, on the um, I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was outlined in the description, but I know they, they had a handle on the proposed. The, the existing is 2,155 square feet, and the uh, the proposed would be 296 more than that, but it would be less going towards the wetlands mm -hmm. because of the mitigation of the of the uh, the grading in the front and what, the shea shallow. Pit. What's what's the impervious going to the wetlands? Not the proposed. Going to the wetlands would be one thousand two hundred and forty two square feet, as opposed to two thousand one hundred and fifty five. Yeah. You said half the roof goes into the chamber, right? So the back half of the roof goes into the chamber. That's right. Uh, what, um, so what are we talking about uh, square footage into the chamber? So half, half the house footprint is, is about how many square feet? Oh, uh, thir it's, it's 38 by, by 31 and a half. Okay. Oh, so right. you look you at it. said 599? Yeah, about 600 square feet. Ah, okay. A little so less. Technically, that's going to the wetland. Through infiltration. Yeah. Right. Um, yes, 599 square feet. 
I uh, actually <laughs> like the planting plan. Just one thing with your planting plan, and I'm sure whoever did that hopefully will give you some female and some male um, winterberry, Ilex reticulata, because you won't have happy girls if you don't have a boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and vice versa. <laughs> you only need to have one or, or one, okay. I think. Well, I better make a note of that. <laughs> I have them in my yard. If you have a good plant person to consult you, hopefully they'll say the same thing, but it's worth noting. <laughs> I have two holly bushes in my yard. It's the same yeah. situation. On the shelf by the uh, sign. Thank you. They're very good, yeah. 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 It, it just didn't mention, you know, right. When you read off those impervious areas, did yep. that include that existing garage? It did. Did. This, the house goes the, the new house goes a little bit more to the right and the driveway goes a little bit more to the left but you have some impervious paving here in the garage right here oh show me the area of new driveway right here it, it, it comes over this way I see okay the existing driveway goes down so it's really just this part right here which is added. Of course, there's a little bit back there, which is going away. So all, all that will pitch towards the wetlands, not the street, though, right? In order this to will get pitch towards there. the wetlands, yes, the driveway, the, which is basically what's what, what the, uh, oh, the well, impact on the wetlands is going to be. It's going to be the driveway. Um, what's the side? side, I don't know. What is the side yard setback? It, it's 15 feet. I thought it was 15, but I don't you think that includes what the town that requires. Way. Is that right? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think that includes. I'm given 17, and yeah. on this side here, it's it's 34-ish uh, to 30-ish, uh, 17, but the required is 15. Okay. Is there a setback requirement for driveway? No, you can go right to the lot line. Okay. I, I do have a, a buffer there, though. Um, are you, I'm done. You're done? Mr. Mullen? Is there any, or do you want me to just jump in? I've got a list here. Um, um, so let me just, I was a little uncertain about, um, so the existing house has its own foundation. Um, that's going to be fully excavated, the existing foundation, the entire yes, it, current I excavation is good. I didn't touch on the excavation, even though I did mention in my project description. Yeah. Um, I, I'll be starting on this corner to get grade, and usually what, what I'll, I'll do is I'll excavate the whole flat. Um, the grade does drop off in the back. Yeah. So there won't be, there's really not going to be a whole lot of material excavated because the new house is going where the old house is. There's already a hole there. But you're doing a new foundation. Yes. You're, you're taking out the foundation. existing foundation. Is the existing foundation for concrete? It's in the block. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it, it said in the des description you're going like an additional three and a half feet towards the wetland in the back side of the house. Um, and that you're going to have an overhang like a foot and a half in the front of the house. That's correct. Um, and it, is that, so is that to kind of I guess I'm wondering, um, instead of encroaching into the 35 foot line, yeah. um, can you bump the house out to the to the 30 foot setback along the whole front the, of the, the house? The new house is. Oh, I the thought that was just the entrance. Well, it, 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 it's, it's part of the entrance and the overhang. The, right. uh, on the front, it's it, it's but right. It's I, I actually asked my my surveyor to put it right there. Okay. Oh, I, so I, what I'll be doing on this house here is um, I'll pour the footings, and um, I actually do it with them. We'll pin the footings with an, on it with an instrument survey because. It's a good I, idea. I <laughs> yeah, it's going to be. I, yeah, I don't want right it. on. It's right. Be right on. No. The, so, so just to make sure I understand, so even though this drawing shows the foundation. For other than the entranceway, 32 or 33 feet from the street with the overhang, 
the face of the building will actually be 30 feet from the from the, the road. The closest point to the building, which is that entry jog there, will be rated for 30 feet. feet. You can't you can't have any part of it, um, you know, closer than 30. So okay. if you had a flat face, though, with no um, front steps, front front entry, oh, the steps included are included in that 30 feet. I, I believe that, yeah. So that's and you got to have 42 42 inch minimum flat to step on. The reason I ask is we have allowed a variance from the 35 foot setback when there was that that portion of the house was actually cantilevered into the 35 between 35 and 25 feet. Um, I don't know if other commission members remember that it was down was it Arcadia? I can't remember the project, but um, so I was wondering if you could do any cantile, you know, cantilevering uh, in the back of the house. It sounds seems like you're doing it in the front, yeah, uh, but I to am. prevent that, to sort of, to not need the the variance in the back, you know, cantilever the back. That's it's just it's it's a lot of cantilever. It'll it'll st yeah it'll still I think it so it'll still be the same. I think it'll still be the same difference almost, except for maybe now just a little part of the jog, um, because it'll okay. still be the same width. It'll still be, it'll still be uh, 31 and a half feet. Okay. Um, I was a little unsure about the limit of work erosion control line. Um, I didn't see it too clearly. Can you just sort of go into where that would be? The uh, I was asking for the edge of the existing lawn, which is right here, right up against where the um, plantings will start. These are two separate areas for the planting. So, so right here, as you can see the pen line. Okay. It seems between the existing garage and the left side of the property, the left property line, yep. there's going to be some grading in there beyond yes. the limits of work. There's, there's um, right now, well, well, I'd like to also mention this too, that right now it looks like there's been a lot of leaves been dumped there, and I was going to, uh, I was going to mention that I would be as part of this, I would also clean those out. I'd we would welcome that. Be happy to clean that out. Yeah. And therefore, I think you know, I, I I'm just going to be necessary to do a little grading there. Okay. Well, usually leaf removal doesn't. I mean, I, I'm I'm not thinking of the final matching grades here. Well, he, it's it's uh, I believe it's two eleven five, and he's bringing two eleven right to the edge. He's got okay, so 211, it's actually excavation and regrading. You're not actually adding fill between 30 feet, 35 feet, or 25 feet in the wetlands. You're removing fill and regrading. Um, so it would be a little bit, little bit removing, yeah, because it's, it's 211 existing right, right here. Right, and the 211 down. comes in and then I'm 212 that in. and 213. Yeah. Close to that. Um, um, the that um, can you just repeat again what that Shea shallow pit is? You said it's eight feet by two feet by eight feet by five foot two. Yeah. By two feet eight inches high. Eight feet by two by five foot two, foot two by two foot eight. Two deep. foot eight. And it's and it's simply just a, I'm just trying to get a vision of this in my head. It's right. just, it's, a con, it's like a giant uh, box with no bottom, with no concrete, bottom, concrete, and perforated sides. So you wrap an infiltration fence, yeah. And you wrap it in stone, yeah. And you wrap the outside of that infiltration fence in on the bottom too. So you know it'll. And you be, lay it in a bed of and it's just empty, and it's not filled with gravel or anything. Just it's not filled with gravel. Uh, the, the, I put a little bit of gravel at the bottom just to make it really nice and level. To help. I do wrap it in, yeah. in stone, yeah. and uh, which, which will actually give it more volume. Yeah. And that whole thing gets wrapped in uh, siltration fence. Do you happen to have a schematic or yeah. some sort of drawing of that to submit with this? I can get one uh, right just online from Shea, from Shea Concrete. Okay. I can get the exact that would, drawing. That would be great. Um, um, the, uh, the wetland line is, it looked like the wetland line was um, determined by LEC in January. Um, 
It looks to me to be around the elevation of 210 or 210 and a half. Um, it, and um, I guess I, I was hoping that the uh, that the Shea shallow pit and the foundation of the house is sufficiently high enough to function to stay out of, you know, in the house to stay out of the water and in the shallow pit to actively infiltrate. Yes, I, I, and I, I took those grades and I, I did once again, I, I believe I mentioned in the project before, the existing house uh, is basement is at 209. Right. And so I'm going to be a foot higher than that with the bottom of the pit and the uh, bottom of the, the new house will be at 211 and a half. Um, so based on the, on by the, the check on the sump pump hole in the, uh, in the, in the house and, and where it went on, there was evidence that there was probably three or four inches of water that had gone in that basement at different points during its, during its time, um, but not much higher than that. And so, uh, therefore, the, the bottom of the pit will be above that. It won't be laying in the, it won't be laying in the groundwater. Yeah, yeah, unless the groundwater is really high. <laughs> um, I think everyone will be in a canoe. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, that's all set, that's all set. Um, how many uh, trees do you anticipate are going to be either removed or destroyed during construction? The uh, only ones would be these ones here near the, that are in the, in the driveway. Can you sort of say what diameter inch? You have some labels. There's a 20. A 20 inch. Two tens two and tens. a six. Okay. So those four? I don't... I think the five inches far enough away and the 12 inches right on the line. Although just, yes, I think that's although those, that's going to be, uh, the, the grades can be pulled back from that. So is some measure going to be taken to protect the root system of those trees during? Um, yeah, it will be a little bit, but I think it's far enough away from the, the 12 inch that's right on the line. Um, and then the five inch, which I think is far enough away. There's no change in grade there. That's an existing line. The ones I was talking about were these these two right here. There's, okay. a, there's a 10 and a 6, and then there's a 10 right here, right at the edge of the drive. Yep. And then a 20 right yep. there. So the five, so the five inch, I, I'm not going to quibble too much, but the, the, so the five inch is currently at around 212. Yes. Um, but it's going to be lower than 211 after grading. Right? That might be sure. I know you got a lot. Because that big bold line that comes from WL2 down towards the driveway is the 211. Yeah. So that's that's kind of my concern there. It's just that that okay. might be protected some. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm sure I'll get mixed up with the, uh, okay. Hard to see in, on the plant. There's a lot going on. <coughs> yes, there is. Um, I, um, I yeah, it's, it's, um, I, I see what you're saying. It, it, it's 212 here, 211 here. It's closer to the 12. It is closer to the 12 than the 11. You're right. Um, I mean, things can be done to, to protect um, yeah. tree roots. You can you can build wells around them. Yeah. To, um, but you know that's kind of that's um, something that can be looked into. Okay. Um, Things that all open it up to the public. Um, just a couple other things. Um, the, the description by LEC is that the forested canopy um, in the wetland area contains a lot of invasives, um, so a lot of uh, really aggressive alien plants, <laughs> and um, and if 
I think one of my concerns about the planting plan is if there isn't some effort to um, control those, that you know it it would it may not m make the most of the plantings of these other natives because. So, so you I make think the most of the ones that I'm putting in. Right. Okay. I mean, you don't want to spend all that money putting in these new native shrubs and put them into an environment where the plants that already exist and are already established there uh, just have it in their nature to kill the native plants. You know, because then you're just you're not um, even though your best intention is to put native plants in the wetlands, the existing plants that are already there are going to choke them out. I, I would have to defer to. Either Chuck or unfortunately Rich Kirby couldn't make it tonight, okay. but I know that he did say that he felt that he put shrubs there that had the best chance of survival. Okay. But to ask, I, I really can't comment much further than that. Now I don't know if Chuck has an opinion on on what he's uh, chosen to put in there. If he thinks that they're are they? What do you I think opinion? what what Anik is saying more is not a different plan, but just have some control or uh, removal of those invasive plants. Oh. And it's part of the planning plan. Beyond the planning plan or within the planning, the planning plan. plan? So beyond the planning plan. So I mean, even if, even if... Taking stuff out. Yes. That's yeah. what I don't mean to interpret what yeah. you're saying. No, that I, that's be, exactly that what That would be saying. my concern. I mean, and I, I could even see, you know, if the environment there, if, if those wetlands are prepared with invasive with those invasives taken out, you may not, and I, I'm, no, I'm not a planting expert, so I'm just throwing it out there as something to consider. Maybe you don't need to plant as many native plants there because what you do plant will thrive and propagate. Do you follow? I do. Because, you know, my hope is that what you do plant is stat <coughs> gets well, gets a good foothold and and creates a good environment back there, which is exactly your purpose for doing that. And if those invasives are not removed, they're going to damage the natives. All right. So, something to consider. Um, and I'm just gonna bring up something Rebecca said earlier tonight, which is, so it looks like there were um, wetlands at different locations, um, LAC did, uh, some augers and, yes. and looked at the soil. Do they have any field data forms? Uh, any observations? Any field notes? Or he mentioned that he had. Uh, I don't know if they're field data forms in his write-up, but okay. they're not there. We'd love to see a copy. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I think that's all. I think that's all I have. Did any other? I got a couple things. Um, this is within. 35 feet within 25 feet. Um, I think we need to look at this on the ground. I know that could be a while, but I think we need to look at it. You mean look at it with no snow? <laughs> if you're saying with no snow, it will be a while. With no <laughs> snow, <but laughs> less snow than we have today, at a minimum. Because we were not able to go out to a site visit on Sunday, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> Ch Chuck, have, you, for that. have you seen those wetlands? It's not just me. I haven't, but we had a project right next to it. I think Kirby did the one next door. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I mean, they're, they're probably right, but being that close, I think we need to look at it. The other thing is, comment I make is that with the removal of that garage, which is basically in the wetlands, are pretty damn close. Um, Get some improvement there, yeah. which offsets some of the encroachment into the 35. So I, I might be might be okay with that encroachment into the 35, but the encroachment into the 25 with the deck, I have a, a concern about that. So I, I would like to uh, look at alternative, different size, shape, location. So he's offering up th three things, just to recap. He's going to remove some uh, yard waste, which is a big problem that's near the, near the garage. Um, he's going to remove some impervious surface, including the garage. 
and he's putting in this infiltration chamber. So those those and improvements planting. and the planting. And it sounds like he's going to be doing some uh, monitoring for some invasives. I wasn't sure. I needed you to explain that again, whether he's shown us an area where he's going to plant. But outside of that planting area, or just within well, that planting area, do you want their invasives? Well, that's why we need to look at it, I think. Yeah, I just, I just don't want um, your effort to improve the wetlands that you're offering for mitigation to be a wasted effort. You know, so whatever makes sense for that, you know, at, within and at the boundary of that planting area, um, mm -hmm. that makes sense. And then this house is going to get sold. What's, what's... The ongoing Yeah, <laughs> how does that happen? Ongoing. So that's just another that's question, but about. still, that's a very important because that next season ma ma yeah. matters a right. lot. Yeah, it does. It and, does. and I don't didn't see them on the plans, but we we need we need monuments too on the wetland on the. Which I think which he did say, say that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. On the twenty-five foot. Yeah. And I if you want to make part of the uh, order of conditions that I take out these invasive aliens. Uh, um, that's that's great, that, and I think that's what we're leaning to. But I, I think we need to see what that looks like when we have a little less snow than we have right now. What's your schedule? Uh, it's not always today. We end up go as soon as possible. Right? So you could excavate in this winter. I saw somebody. I saw somebody this morning excavating a new bed. Yeah. 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 It worked all last winter too. So. Okay. Um, at this point, I'll, I'll just open it up to the public. Any questions on this project? No? Okay. Um, hearing none, then I'd, um, any, any other questions from commission members? Sounds like we've asked for a little bit more information and maybe one additional site visit. Um, I, can't know, can, I can't read agreement with the, um, with the deck. The improvements, with the improvements that are being made, removing that building and the impervious area and the, uh, having the infiltration, like Chuck said. That's that's definitely improving work there, and uh, maybe we should look at some some uh, different uh, configurations. If I were to make a suggestion, uh, if the size of the deck could stay the same or, or close, I, I I did mention it was slotted, I believe, with stone mm -hmm. underneath it. Um, but well, one of the things, and, and I, I don't know if I was talking to Chuck or who I was talking to, but um, if you thought that that was still going to be impervious to going towards um, taking out part of this driveway because the uh, the garage doors actually kick in five feet from the house I, I you know I could do um, you know stone trough at the end of that, that driveway would be good. that would be good and if I did that um, I would believe not now this is the the driveway is the only thing going back there if I put that stone trough in there I would think that's going to greatly reduce the runoff, yeah. and you know maybe little, then the, the deck is doesn't look so bad. It's a little bit more infiltration. I didn't um, with considering that these pulling out the garage. There's a comprehensive planting plan, mm. um, removing the sump pump, uh, removing yard waste, and also doing infiltration. Uh, I didn't have quite so huge an issue with the deck. I was just grateful to see that permanent structure removed, the garage, especially what you, you yeah. could store in a garage. You know, that garage being out of there. Yeah, I'm alone not, I'm not is really a, averse. I'm not really against the deck that much because, because of all these improvements. It's a lot of improvement. Um, now, a concern I have with the deck is setting a precedence allowing the structure within 25 feet. Yeah. yeah. You know, there already is one. Even though there already if, if right, there it's was a bit of a trick one, within two part. feet. <laughs> well, and uh, and what's uh, on a on a bad day, probably the what's going to get spilled off that deck is going to be you know, like beer. beer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Rum punch. Rum punch. You know. So. Uh, um, I'm wondering if there's any way we could have the footings for the deck no closer than 25 feet. That's a big can leaver. Uh, yeah, well, we have to reduce the size of the deck. That's a big maybe, maybe make it wider uh, or longer, 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 like not the house. as wide. Uh, well, so I was wondering. So now it looks like it's about isn't it three one? Feet, 
Okay, we're about 21 feet, feet, feet away from the one. Anyone? Uh, two feet. Two feet. Um, well, I guess, I guess when, well, where the, the house is only foot and a half now. Where the stairs going to go? Yeah, the stairs are yeah. here. The side one. They aren't stairs on the deck. No. So is those, what, this, uh, Mr. Johnson, the stairs yes. that are shown on the back side of the house, are those existing out the back side of the house? Yeah. The yes. proposed, wait, they're existing or proposed? Existing. Existing. But okay. It, I think what you're driving at, there would be stairs coming off the deck too, yeah. Towards the driveway? Yes. Okay, so. But they'd be, um, they within wouldn't be the 25. The 25. No. no, they wouldn't. Yeah, they'd be outside of the 25 feet. Okay. So if you could make that deck longer, a few feet less wide, canter or lever it a bit and hold it to the 25, and not not the deck itself, but any, any uh, footings. Yeah, any solitudes mm -hmm. or anything. Yeah, yeah. Take a look at that yeah. and see if that's possible. That one. Two feet. I think I think you're up for the challenge. Yeah, I'm. I'm just trying to actually move it back from this feet. Yeah. Yeah. If I can just take a second here. Yeah. Sure. We have one on Hayward Street. We allow the cantilever deck. Yeah, six feet is. Um, six feet too much. You have to change the shape of that deck. No, I mean the so a four foot with a two foot cantilever. So, but a six foot deck isn't very practical. That's the most. Can't you use it. No. Yeah. Six feet. The table's like five feet or something. Well, it's, it's something to consider. Yeah. Uh, um, Are you locked into a deck? You can't do stairs out, out the back, small, a patio small landing, and then something on the ground? I think I'm going to, well, I, I could do something on the ground, but then I'd be pretty, you know, well, that the way I think of pavers, but that's, that's pervious. <laughs> um, I could probably get five and a half, six feet of deck Keep the and keep the sauna tubes in so they're not at past the 25. That would be good. And I can sit, work this probably into that. That and then uh, it's just going to have to be a small skinny deck. But I do need to give them a second way out too. So right, yeah, right, you know, that's, right. There's no doubt about that. Uh, understood. I got to make the building inspector happy too. Right, <laughs> right. Well, isn't that 30 foot setback unusual in writing? Mm. Right. It sounds it sounds it it's, it's sounds unusual. It's unusual to have uh, deed restriction, I suppose, but it's not the first time I've ever run into it. Okay. A, a, deed, a deed restriction. Yeah. When whoever did the subdivision that like, they kind of refer to as Poets Corner, yep. the tennis and uh, whoever did that subdivision must have put that on all yeah. the deeds. Yeah. Um, Chuck, do you have any? Oh, questions? so it's a deed restriction. Yes. It's not a town. It's not a town. It's, it's a deed, deed restriction, restriction, but it was applied to the whole subdivision. What, what is the ten foot setback? Twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is twenty. Yeah, do you want to ask Brian a question about the leaching gallery? It doesn't look like we have two foot separation there. Is that? What do you think about? Do we have a? Um, so it's. I don't know how far it gets buried. It's two two foot eight inches. It's going to go into the ground. It's at elevation two eleven and a half, and groundwater must be at two ten two nine. Well, the existing basement's at two nine, and existing basement's at two nine. And we're at sump doesn't run two eleven all the time, but and where are you seasonally. proposing the gallery? Uh, the uh, uh, chamber to the right. What, what elevation though? Oh, 210. 210. One foot above the existing. Oh, right, of course. Uh, 210 to 212. What, what kind of cover do you have on it? Uh, how, how much soil cover do you have on the top? The, the, there's probably only going to be eight inches to a foot. Oh, okay. Aren't there ones you can get like a foot? If they're just wider and they, I believe Shea actually does have um, uh, one foot thick. Yeah, I, I know. I've, I've actually I've used you know them in the past years ago. Yeah. Um, it, so. it might be a different style, unless they start making them. That used to use them in the used to use them in the late nineties. Well, could you just move it uphill a little bit? 
moving toward the street a little bit. You My concern is separation from groundwater. That's that's the concern. It really should be two feet. Uh huh. So um, if you could get it two feet from the groundwater, that would be preferable. Yeah. Um, from from the I would think for the most part it would be because of that. You know, when when I see that pump kick in, um, right now that so right now I'm at I'm at uh, two oh nine that that hole, if you will, which is 15 inches low, is dry, of course, a great test will be when this uh, snow melts. <laughs> right. If this snow melts. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I could, I could raise that up a little if you'd like. I mean, yeah, I mean, you would only need over the top of that, I mean, I think you're certainly not going to need um, just 20, but I think they can be driven right over at the surface for the most part with cars. Not that you have that as an issue here, I'm just saying yeah. would, there wouldn't be a danger of it collapsing is what I'm saying, like the plastic chambers. Oh no! Um, you can get it. The regular ones, I don't think there's any uh, any worry of it collapsing. But you can also get an HG20, which is yeah. Like there would be no need for that here, I don't think. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, that'd be okay. Those are usually used like if they're underneath pavement in the roadway right. or something like that. Brian, if it's if it's shallow or it doesn't have to be kind of bigger area, does it fit the same capacity? No, he. But he, what he's saying is, you know, he he can probably raise it without changing the chamber. Okay. But you're right, if the chamber dimension changed, obviously the yeah. storage the storage would change, but I don't think storage is an issue here anyway. Okay. Okay. Um, any further questions from the commission? Uh, any questions from the public? Or? Yes, please uh, please introduce yourself. Kieran O'Sullivan, I, I live at 31 Curtis Street. Yes. Uh, and I don't know this man, I've never met him before, yep. or, or I just have a general comment. I mean, he, his lot is very similar to mine. It's a kind of an odd-shaped lot, and where he's putting the deck is kind of similar to where I had put one one time, and I know that there was a concern about this, the width of the deck, but one thing, I, I, I some firemen in my family, and, and one thing with a house is that a good exit is, is very important, and even at the moment, there's a lot of snow on my deck, but I still shovel my way as an exit, yeah. but if a six-foot wide deck, just not the reasonable width of a deck at all. So I mean, I'd be all for a 12-foot deck. And, I mean, I, I'm very interested in what he's done here because it's, I think he's made a lot of efforts to kind of meet the commission. And if I was his neighbor, I'd be fine with it, I guess. That's okay. basically what I okay. wanted to say. Thanks for your input. Anybody else? No? I move we continue the hearing until March 11th. Okay. Um, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay, we're going to continue to March 11. Is that going to incorporate your site walk? It Are you going to try to do we're, that we're or you want to go to March 25th? Let's. Oh, you want to go to let's April? Try. Let's try. We're hoping for a lot of warm days between now and then. Um, hoping. Okay. On, on the 11th, um, yes. do you want me to come in? With anything amended, so yes. What would you like to see amended? Well, the the things we talked about, the, the deck, reducing the size of the driveway a little bit. Field field data forms. Field data, field data forms. The, the, as far as the site visit, what everything else, if everything else goes well, I'd be willing to um, issue an order of condition with the final planning plan to be. After we've done site visit, in other words, oh, okay. do have the um, hold the, the approval of the planning plan in advance until we've been able to get out there and look around. That would give us a chance to look at those invasives, see what the place looks like, and he could still start some of those construction. Would you like to take that up at the next meeting? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying, so, if yeah. we don't get to the site visit next week. Uh, I think we can still move ahead and do the site visit. Ah, gotcha. Day. Okay. I don't have any objection to that. So then on the plan, the deck, the stone trough at the end of the driveway. Yeah. For the plan, I'm sorry. Um, get Mr. Curtis field data forms. Yep. And I, there are I, a couple additional um, mitigation me measures that you did mention tonight that I don't think were in the written plan. It'd be good to get those uh, right away. Like, leaves. I, I can. The, the leaves. Well, would that just be um, included in the order of conditions, or do you want me to amend my project description too? Either you way. You don't have to. 
I don't think you need to resubmit the whole project description. Okay. Maybe just a one-page, yeah, you know, letter to us letter. saying in response to the meeting. Okay. I, I, I just, I'm suggesting that because it might just be an easier. Do you want a new plan? Um, if we can change the deck, yes. So if you, if you change the deck, we're going to show the monuments. We're going to show a uh, erosion control line on the edge of lawn. Yeah. Oh, actually, we, things. we can, we can go over it. Watch, we have the stone trench on the driveway. It's going to be a stone trench. So all those things should be added. Yeah. You should identify where that pile of yard waste is. No one forgets that's what one of the projects you're doing. You might not be able to see it right now. And then the uh, not only the concrete, the shallow, the shea concrete shallow pit, to see if that works, so we can raise it up, or you can get something that's shallower than two eight. So maybe the only one thing that I saw they were, were actually uh, huge cylindrical ones that you connect that are more for they really weren't for residential use. That's the only other ones that I can say that I saw, but I will look into it. They have a, they make so much stuff there now. This is the one that in Wilmington? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so it's been continued. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay, well, we're gonna continue. Do you, are, are you, do you think you have a handle on what we're looking for for the next meeting? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, the deck, the, the end of the driveway for the plan. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll also mention, uh, make, a, make a note of where the yard waste is. Yeah. And then as far as the uh, a letter um, mentioning mentioning that I would be cleaning out that yard waste. Yeah. And consider, um, consider um, controlling those invasive plants. Mm-hmm. <coughs> as part of the planting okay. project in the back. Very good. Thank I you. I do. I think I do have a handle on it. OK. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. OK. We're going to. Uh, Yes. Yeah. 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 You can see it through the trees. Yeah. 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 Um, excuse me, um, Mr. Johnson. Yes. Whittier is that street, the dead end, the Birch Meadow, that has that little walkway that you can walk yeah. right to the high school? It does. That's Whittier. Yeah. Yep. And how, how far back from Birch Meadow Drive is this property? This is uh, probably, as you, for, you come in on Wadsworth and take a look. That's right. I have an excessive map. Can we? Can we Yes. Is this urgent? Um, well, I might, I might drive by there and look at it. Oh, I know but where you it is. Put it in a map. We don't need to. We don't. We could. Never mind. Take this. We'll Thank you. Do you have it? We'll Thanks. Away. Fort Ross says. I do have it right we here. They, they, they beat me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give it six or seven on the left. Once you take the left on Lydia. About that. Yeah. Do you want to take, take your, plans off the cork board? Um, okay, so uh, Chuck, we we talked about the minor project. Um, Let's go right to people in the audience. Yes, uh, Sullivan. Let's do that. Which one, Curtis? Right. Yeah. So we prepared the um, notice of intent. I prepared the notice of intent. Um, copies. Thirty-one Curtis Street. Welcome back. Hey, I, 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 oh, oh, was I talking to you? Welcome back, Mr. Sullivan. This one. Did I say that? You said that no. It gets too much. So did we vote on this at some meeting? I was. You weren't here. You weren't here. Yep. It was the minutes. It's Terry's last. Are we doing an order of conditions or are we doing a certificate of compliance? What do I have on that? Certificate of compliance. No. No, I don't. No, I don't. Yeah, you filed a notice of intent. It's an order of but on, on Did I get the right one for you guys? It says COC. It does say COC. Yeah. 
So I was going to say. A little typo yeah. on the agenda. Well, I was say, oh, I thought you were talking about this. On the agenda. Oh, yeah, the agenda, yeah. I was going to say, this was a fast Well, you fast can vote on that if you, if you want. This was a fast one. I'm project. sure Mr. Sullivan would be happy that. That. Like, that we signed a I can't believe he did all that work in this amount of time. He's quick, so yeah. this is a shed. Maybe worth for you. Yeah, I think it This is the project. Right, right. Okay. I remember the project. I just didn't think it would happen this fast. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just taking a look at this. Order of conditions. So this order, just so I understand, this order of conditions was drafted, or excuse me, was the project was approved and this order of conditions was drafted to reflect the discussion at the meeting at which the NOI was approved? Yes. Yep. So we're, the commission is on record with a um, quorum vote approving the project. That's right. Correct. Um, so the question is, should I sign this or not? Do I need yeah, we need your signature on this one. You do? Yep. You make number four. Well, I mean, if we're on record for voting for approval, it, that's where the form is required. I'm not sure, I, I don't think the form is required, is required to approve it. For signatures? I think so. Form think? is for the purposes of voting. But I don't think the signatures are Never official. Never heard it explained that so. way. The, the only thing I've heard about the signing is that it's an administrative act and it doesn't matter if you were at the meeting or not. We've always disagreed on that, but I can certainly tell you that's what I've been told and what I've practiced. So this order must be signed by a majority of the Conservation Commission. Where does it say that right on the form? So the commission is four, majority is three. But no, no. The no, it's commission seven, seven yeah. Um, Chuck, is there a... We can send it to Karen. No, we can't. We can't find him. Chuck, is there a part of the conditions that describes the appropriate storage storage requirements for the shed? Back. There is no... Uh, specific. Yeah, I didn't specify that, but can add it. Um, no, I didn't put that in there. Although, I mean, item on page 13, item 18, generally unspecifically covers, covers it. It does. It does. Yeah. So I, I remember, Mr. O'Sullivan, you said you stored bicycles there anyway. It wasn't yeah. anything. But yeah. No lawn we c I can certainly add something before this is sent out if you feel so the need. I think we're covered. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it needs to be modified. What do you think? Okay. This um, the version I have is not complete. On page fourteen, there's still some blanks. Deed. That's um, <coughs> how that form. That's how that form is. I, I don't know why it's it's. We don't have um. Required the, the order of conditions recorded at the middle section of the book and page. You would write the book and page once it's recorded. Once it's recorded. Or do you mean document number cited herein? The well, earlier that, part. Grantor's identification information. Grant to grantees identification information. Oh, right, 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 right. Well, at least the document number has to be filled in. Would be document two. Document number two. One one page site plan, thirty one Curtis Street in Reading, Mass. But then uh, grantors' identification information and grantees' identification information can be can stay there. I mean, I don't, I don't know that we have to really change that. It's, it's just boilerplate. I mean, that suggests that we got to get that information. I, yeah, I'm 
I mean, we do need verification that it's uh, recorded, mm -hmm. but that's just added to the file. Right. Okay. Um, Take out those later so it doesn't happen again. I don't, I don't have any comments on this. So just add document to it and, document two, yeah. no and just write book and page. You could just add it to it. In all these areas, I didn't know if there was granite bounds on this property. And I left that in there. So he's yeah. responsible for installing granite bounds um, on the 25 foot line. I don't remember seeing any out there. Yeah, one of the ones you you looked at, you did see them, and I think that was the that RDA. That was on Whittier. Yeah, the Whittier Sorry. one. Yeah. Yeah, all there is is a stockade fence. Um, that's a standard you ask everyone to put in granite pounds permanent stone or concrete yeah. pounds or equivalent yeah yeah um, the I remember on um, one project we um, stipulated that the 25 foot bounds could be at or near the property line and did not have to run through the grass back lawn. Do you remember that? It was over um, it was on Willow Street. That was the one on Willow. Um, yeah. I don't know the number though. They're still building over there. They're in a, a very snowy area. Yeah, I'm thinking so down by the Salem 5 mm -hmm. neighborhood actually. Yeah. That wasn't with me then. Yeah. The only thing yeah, we over there is the bus stop with a me here. But we did something very, oh, wait a minute, on um, uh, exactly where the runoff, the outfall was, that was the guy. Bob so Carboni, we did something. Where he was, he was, where his backyard just basically gradually turned into wetland mm. and fragmites and, yeah. um, you know, and instead of having the 25 foot bounds <coughs> through his back line, we talked about setting the 25 foot or some bounds at each of the property line limits. Yeah. Well, it doesn't no. seem to be an issue. Um, no one's objecting. Okay. I don't hear any objections. So. Okay. okay. Um, I, I wasn't here, um, and, and I will sign this, but I, I understand that there was an issue when this was discussed about a shed that was actually within the resource area. The, the only thing I brought up is that this property has never gotten an official wetland delineation. And there's a shed out there and, you know, beyond the wetland line. So I, I just within, said let, within the wetland line. With it, actually in the wetland, yeah. past the wetland line. So the wetland line's in front of the existing shed. The shed is used um, regularly. So I w was wondering if the commission felt the need to get a um, real delineation. Because this one was just copied. Um, well, Jack Sullivan said that he went out there and he, based on soil and vegetation, he came up with a wetland line that was very similar to the one that Fran Fink did. But I think the shed went in. The story about the shed was it was determined that there wasn't a wetland back there at that point, and then a neighbor had a delineation which brought the line more into focus, and so I guess they can. Should we include the summary of what you just said in the findings here, then? Yeah, I could I could uh, summarize that, and that might be valuable in kay. the future. I can't tell you that the line was set by Fran, so there was no issue with that line. But the shed is within the line. I don't know. About <laughs> oh, it's well, it's well with that. <laughs> 
I'm yeah, not. Exactly. I know Chuck loves that. State. I'm not. No, I just think that you just you just. I think that it's obvious <laughs> so, that there is an issue with that line. Yes. I even think Fran would say it. And I know you're. She said it though. <laughs> I mean, how do you? How? <laughs> Look, this was done in 2006, that line, I think it was done in 2006, and there is kind of a uh, run through it on your, um, how this how this happened. Uh, right, so right. there was a narrative and there's a run through of, you know, in 2002, something happened in 2006, something happened, a little bit of backtracking, but. Don't um, you have that in, in what, Mr. O'Sullivan? Yeah, um, yeah, submitted? it's part of the application, yeah. Because yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yep. Um, to me, the, you know, I don't think that, I mean, I think it's a good idea to add that to the application, but. But, but it's also the, referenced in the document. The shed was allowed to stay. Right. And the delineation didn't need to happen. And I think everyone approved, right. right. re-approved right. the, the original pink line. I'm telling you, there have been other lines in this town that she had stuck by and it meant that she, someone couldn't do something they already told them they, that they could do and she didn't back down. So I'm telling you, she did things that, you know, despite what people thought she did, what she thought was right, so. No, I, I'm comfortable with it, but if, but if I was a homeowner, I might say, it might be worth my while to check this out just to make sure it's right, you know, kind of off the radar screen to see if I could actually move it back. Well, that would certainly be advantageous, yeah. I mean, the description we got from the site visit was, yeah. is this a wetland? I mean, just to summarize. I mean, I think that's what it was. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I thought I agreed, too. Mr. O'Sullivan, do you have any questions or comments? Or? You're, you're done. I'm on, a, I'm on my own tonight. I mean, uh, <laughs> all right, that's I'm all right. I'm not a lawyer or anything, um, so I am... Um, and even with these, I'll be checking back in with Chuck at every step of the way. You know, it's not. Um, I guess one question I have to you is, um, if at a certain point, if this, if that shed that's back there mm -hmm. is truly in wetlands and it's wet. Over time, it will eventually degrade and rot, you know, and it will no longer be a viable, usable structure. Um, when that time comes, um, would you be willing to, you know, discontinue use of a shed in that location? Or well, I and wouldn't be putting another one in there. No. You would. You just. If, if I that mean, fall, if that falls down from the snow, I'm, I'm yeah. going to be busy. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Don't. Okay. Yeah. Don't. Don't keep that shed painted and nice. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Keep it in good Yeah, keep well, it in good, good shape. <laughs> um. Um, but I don't have any other <laughs> issues with this order of conditions. That I don't know if it's worth putting in the order of conditions something to the effect of upon. I don't think this, this order of conditions was anything about the shed, and I actually think it's closed. So okay. I'm mean, going to add well, anything to it. it. And I yeah. did add okay. whatever. It, what's in here says existing conditions because of that shed may remain, but just like Jamie always likes, the, within that 25 foot area, those trees and that natural vegetation has to return. You know, like yeah. we're not cutting down trees because uh, in the future it's jeopardizing a project. Yeah, okay. yeah. So. yeah. Um, any other questions or comments from commission members? No? Okay. Uh, motion to approve the drafted order of conditions. Second it. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. All We're just going to uh, 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 oppose. Did you vote? No, you didn't vote. Uh, vote. Uh, those in favor? What, is it, what does the minute say from the have, last week? I think, I think we're done. You approved. I think we're done. As I understand it, Get those last meeting, out. you already approved an order of conditions to incorporate that discussion. Well, we're done. I don't think hurt. we can vote on it again. Motion to issue the order. Motion. It was, there was a motion to issue the order. The only thing uh, that would be left, I guess, from reading this, is and a motion to close the hearing. We're done. So we're all set. Okay. okay. Yeah. So we just to need vote. to sign at this point. We just point. need to sign. Okay.
you need to sign, sir. <laughs> don't sign it under duress. I am sorry. Even though he's pointing his finger at you, don't, don't sorry, feel forced at all to. Uh, well then, show up. Oh, I know. That's why I'm sorry. No, I say James U D under duress. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for coming in and sitting through all the earlier meetings. Yeah. To, uh, to be here. Um, What's that? I've been just with you again. So what happens is I send that out to you, certified mail, with some instructions on it, and the first step you need to take is bring it down to the registry and have Two it recorded. More. And then Seven. provide me um, the copies of that recording. And you have to wait 10 days before you start, which I'm sure is not going to be an issue. And uh, then, again, reading through it, there's some other things. I'll, if you call me, but I'll, but I'll add our pre-activity meeting, which you need to let Maybe. me know prior to Are breaking you ground. Whittier? But or after the no. erosion control. Sunny side. Okay. Okay. Would you contract the drawing? Get in touch with me. That's different. Really, yeah. just call me and we'll walk through it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. Okay. So let's uh, take up 87 Sunny side, right? Welcome. Welcome back. Thanks for waiting. Okay. So we issued the order of conditions. Same. We closed hearings. I read through both of them. We closed right. and yep. we issued. So this is just to go over, make sure what okay. you wanted is in there. Okay. Let's do it. What? After several meetings. That's the next five meetings, I think. Well, not until May. End of May. Thank you. Okay. This is a very similar um, description that I went through. Grab the project description from the application. But we did ask for some plantings yep, inside the 25 foot area. That's in there. Okay. Which can you point me to it? Uh, hmm. It's additional conditions. Yeah, probably. Existing stuff on. Nothing ever happens yep, until yep. the end. And the appropriate part. Oh, you got document two on this one. I am I you reading through it twice or something like that. I figured it out. Um, do we really have two O'Sullivans here tonight? Yes, yeah. we do. Huh? You know, and they actually. I thought there was a typo. You know, it's really. Funny is Why? they actually live in the same. Um, uh, What's that called? Not is it neighborhood? All right, but that's not what I'm, I'm talking about. They, they live in the same panel number on the flood map. <laughs> 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 so you didn't have to change yeah. that. No, either. I was like, wow, man. <laughs> <laughs> kind of makes us two that's double. Great. <laughs> that's great. And then funny. someone who Jack really Sullivan that. Engineering presented them. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. so there's a lot of okay. similarities. There's too many. Too many Sullivan. Right yeah. there. Because we don't have any. Shit oh, yeah, it's in the right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the agenda. Okay. I mean, again, this is just standard controls on the project plus the addition of some plantings kind of describe that bounds are in there yeah. um, now putting bounds where you're saying it's put stone bounds now since you're asking the question we should bring that up and explain what the stone bounds are so we like to see um, permanent markers depicting the 25 foot um, no disturb or um, zone of natural vegetation line 
Yours. My pool. It's right through the pool. <laughs> you don't have to put one in the pool. Yeah. We can. You can get a variance for that one. Where you, you know, just kind of generally do it, or is it? No, it actually says every twenty. It's uh, two foot in the ground. You can flush with the ground if you do an iron stake next to it, um, and then every twenty-five feet or on corners. An, an iron stake there, so it could be found with metal detector if need be, because they get lost, kind of buried over. Um, so it's, in our case, it's probably 25, 30 stone pounds. Really? I mean, it, the yeah, wetland they have wrecked a, my entire property. Right. It's a big view all the way around my property. So this, and it's oh, inside a fence well, and pretty inside much. Inside a fence. And it's right. Okay. So, well, there's a, there's a significant amount of pool patio that's not going to. So this is the 25 foot we're talking about. So you have over 500 feet. I don't know. And maybe not that much. So wouldn't be you know you could put a drill hole there, but not a bound, and then one here. I'm not and sure. One here. Along the 25 foot though we're talking about. Oh, the 25? Oh, that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. That's so that's over here. Um, about 25 feet. That's the this this uh, that's the thirty five. So the next one in, yep. Yeah. 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 At the turning. At the turns, maybe. At the turns, <laughs> I'd be fine with at the yeah. turns. I mean here, you know, here and then up against the fence. But this is outside the fence. I know. That's kind of. So Chuck. Yeah. So most of this end is all. It's kind of concrete bounds at Zani property. At Whittier, uh, on um, the Zani. Zani, yeah. So kind of was that at the wetland, or was that at the yeah? Well, that's easily foot. done. This is a little yeah, convoluted. Yeah, the other's kind of convoluted. Okay. Um, how about just one in the middle? One, she said, "Oh, one, it's at the wetland." You know what I mean? Instead of yeah, basically, yeah, one by the pool deck. In the well, one. Yeah. It one, does change. So one, two, two, it was. What did it look like? We can do some. Oh, well, it's actually it goes. I have her application right here. I thought though, I or thought some the of the shed. vegetation was further in. I don't further know. I'm just, I'm just bound. Or I don't know how you want to. Yeah, I knew this would be. <laughs> That's what I was saying. I knew this whole project would be bad. Is that is that <laughs> doable? Like that. So, about, so, so it's about six or seven. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> hey Chuck. Yeah. Um, can we put in something? I mean that. <clears throat> The applicant and I just sort of sketched out. Do you want this coffee? Mm -hmm. I already marked a coffee. The red circles. Kind of at the I mean, turning like points. There, there, there. Oh. And then there. Oh. And then there. Oh. And then there. Oh. And then like here. Just yeah. this whole section. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I have. That. Is that I've had people put it on the fence right there. Yeah. And I'm not sure if they'll fit. That's six, and he was yeah. six or seven. Six or seven. Okay. What it? What do you think? Um, I like them here. I don't really care about anywhere else. Wow. That's why I was originally saying from the shed over to the side yard. I, I like them here. Where? You think from the shed to my side yard. Because this is also where we're doing that planting. Right. I mean, it makes sense to have it over here just so, so someone realizes it, but but maybe right at the property line. So what do we have? One, yeah. two, three. Or at the easement line. Oh, yeah, at that easement line. So one, two, three, five, five. Okay, five. why don't we put in a quantity in our... Five to delineate. Yeah. You can, you can take that. If you and want. It's been yeah. so long. Yeah. 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 Um, Chuck, in this, um, in the meeting notes, there's also an agreement that um, there would be some control of invasives. And I know you've had some, and I think you agreed to that. I think you, so, you know, kind of like we were saying, like I was saying earlier, a hand in hand of planting and invasive control is going to really ensure that a healthy um, growth. So, mm -hmm. can we add that to the? Yeah, we sure can. Okay. 
Um, and I think, according to the minutes, it says that you, the, the administrator, suggested cutting back bittersweet once a year. And that's where I didn't write in because what's I didn't re I didn't I needed to get more direction from you guys. Were we saying plant it? Plant bittersweet? No, no, no. no. Were, were we saying do the planting or do the invasive removal or were we saying both? I, th I didn't I realize we were saying both. So I, I didn't write both. both. I, I think both. I think it needs to go hand in hand. Okay. I thought it was both. So that's both. easily added. Okay. Okay, Knowing so. That bittersweet is a lifetime endeavor. Operation. Yes. <laughs> um, so we're going to cut back the bittersweet. Cut back the bittersweet. Um, five bounds. Do you want to put in at turning points in the backyard? Mm -hmm. And uh, besides that, I don't. Any other comments on the order? No? All right, then let's. Uh, Yearly cut back of bittersweet. Yeah. Right. I'll add both those in. Okay. Okay. Don't I need to make a motion to approve the order of conditions as amended? No, we agreed no, to that. No, we already agreed. And it's, and it's the closed. last time it's all Sorry. set. Okay. <clears throat> Speed. I just have to make sure what you agreed to I put in there. Yep. I would like to request that in the future we have the order of conditions in the package or an email prior to the meeting. How? Because after like, tonight, I'm not going to sign any more conditions I haven't read. That's fine. Just make sure we don't close the meetings. But I think in the future that this will be, uh, it will be easier to deal with. I hope so. so. Supposedly, there's more hours to be offered. Um, okay. So these were actually finished early today, like four. I didn't, Thank I you. sent them once at that time and it seemed to be a waste of time yeah, to everybody. So I didn't I didn't send them today at four. Okay. I think Thank we're you. all set. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good Bye. evening. Bye. And the other thing about these, I mean they're really super easy. There's really not much to what we're doing here on these ones. Um, but I but I want to I want to do that. Um, Chuck, I want to get to the other stuff. So the emergency permit. We have Zani to uh, sign. Okay. Zani. Yeah. So we don't need to deal with the tree removal at Forty Glenmere because we already did. Um, and Zani. That's 84 Whittier Road. Determination of applicability. <coughs> With your road. What is Jennifer Zombie doing? She is. Adding, is she adding a second floor? Removing the roof, putting on a new second floor and roof. That on will be cantilever. No ground disturbance, no grading or excavating. How far from the what? Um, Greater than 35 feet. 
no. No, that's not true. The existing, the existing structure is within, is between 25 and 35 feet. So that's why it's not a mining process, right? That's right. There's some detailed plans here. I don't know if you were here for this. Yeah, this may have been Allison and that would be mine. Jamie and I not Jamie. Sorry. No, you won't hear. Terry. Yep. That would be why I don't remember. Some very yeah. detailed plans. Okay. Um, I don't have any comments on this. <laughs> Okay, any objections to or any comments on this? Hearing none, let's let's sign it. Where's the original? Sign it right here. <laughs> I don't think you were here on the, for the last meeting. I made the motion. Oh, maybe you were here. <laughs> then you were here. You <laughs> see? You don't remember it. Tells you I can't trust my own memory. The minute that was some. Um, the minute should live. And he is present. Okay. Um, do you remember Terry's last date? No. We did miss a meeting. Yeah. Were you here for Terry's last meeting, Ryan? Yeah. I thought that was this meeting. Yep. Can I see what plan? No. Sure. No. Sure. It's not going to help. We're going to move right on. Um, move right along. Um, so um, the North Reading. Oh, I remember this. Draft to EIR. That was good. For what? Uh, it was in your packet. Well, we don't have the draft yet. So they, they, they are. If you wanted to comment at the meeting and you wanted to, it was snowed building? out. What are they building? Water and wastewater uh, solution. Yeah. Long term. North Reading doesn't have public sewers. Long term water, water supply, yeah. public wastewater management system. They're going to put in a tree. Water and wastewater stakeholders involvement. And participation meeting. Yeah, I, I and didn't. it's going to be rescheduled. It was on the 12th, yeah. and it was snowed out, and we'll be contacted. They're going to build a treatment plant and discharge the Ipswich River? Well, they don't say that. They, they well, where they, else is it going to go? They talk about the Ipswich River in there and how it's already stressed, and they need to find out what the water sources are going to be. <coughs> There's a lot of infiltration uh, looking into producing infiltration from treatment plants rather than dumping them in the river. Now. And you feel probably aware. I have worked on a lot of them, but half of them work. Yeah, that doesn't Ooh. surprise me. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Ooh. So do you know the date, Chuck, that they're rescheduling it to no. yet? They haven't, no? they haven't okay. had a date yet. Okay. Um, so can I just uh, jump in on an agenda? I, or actually, that, why that could be used, because they have an acre of minimal lot size. This could cut it down. Mm. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Okay, I want to get to uh, the administrator's report, Pine Vale dumping. Report on. <laughs> report on. Oh, Pine Vale dumping. Tell us, tell us some good news. <laughs> so, so a uh, request was sent to um, town council to look over a couple of options, and <coughs> as far as. Um, what our what our role would be being landowners okay and um, what we could do and if you know without, gi without giving it all away they asked me some questions so I'm gonna skip a little bit they asked me uh, Colin council came back and asked me a bunch of questions and I gave them kind of a rundown of, of uh, what had happened and provided them all the information and they're going to get back to us with whether we can find people okay. and then 
what criteria we would have to um, have to do these fines. So if this didn't work, then what would work? Okay. What would we need to provide, such as pictures, such as witnesses, or just the existence of a pile and an access point? Would that be enough? So um, they're going to look at that, and they're going to look, kind of help us out throughout town whether fining can happen. So we found out that uh, there's a anti-littering um, bylaw that can be, the fine can come from the police department or the health department, and the police department felt that this was a finable offense. Mm -hmm. And then um, the, well, last, the, the last step was to go to town council, well, and that's why, what we did. What pushed it, I'm just curious, I don't disagree, yeah. but what pushed it into a finable offense? Because it is leaves, it's not trash. So the anti littering bylaw goes through a description of what is litter and in that um, description garbage is biomatter and like something you would find at a restaurant right. but uh, trash can be yard waste because it, it can be. yes because it has its own it's, it keeps dropping down and then it's described as trash and then they give a description of trash and they give a different description like leaves, woody material, things like that. Really? So it so it is in there and it is also in there on open space. So those two things because mm -hmm. this is open space and this is you know a description under the uh, under the byline. Okay. Now I sent that out to everyone underlining those things, I believe. So yeah. That might have been something you guys missed. We don't even know. But you can, you can, back, <laughs> you can back up. So that led me to. So as you kind of walk through that, you find out that you know what the Conservation Commission can't actually fine anyone. They can't. We can't under the anti-littering bylaw. But Why we can not? ask the police to do but it. But we can ask the police to do it, and they're happy to do it. Well, they were happy to do it until we get when we get this final step. You know, when we get the approval that we do um, and we can find people so um, really you know it's really coming together and um, if it doesn't happen for this situation then we'll know where it will be able to be used and the police like I said the police were absolutely willing to go out there and they offered uh, some other suggestions which I could I could bring up later but I think what we want to do um, with this situation is is definitely either find them or catch them doing it and, and that's what we're going to be. That's what we're going to be doing next year. You know. let, okay. let me throw this in for the mix. Um, ask them that if we have eyewitnesses, i.e., neighbors. That's been asked. If that's if that's adequate, is it? That that was brought into the mix, mix and pictures from us or from neighbors. neighbors. And that's adequate. No, they're they're. It's not. They're taking that all into consideration. This is that was. Plenty of evidence for the police, okay. wow. but not for, well, town council hasn't got back to us yet. Any, any idea when they will? No. Okay. Because they have other things to right. work on, too. Right, right. So. Um, there were other items on the agenda that you said you wanted to bring up, and I've got a couple things. Sure. Um, I don't have uh, too many copies of this, but I was contacted by a homeowner that lives on Belmont Street who did some snowshoeing in Timberneck Swamp, and they found a tree stand, which is, as she pinged herself on her GIS and then provided this to us, which I believe I sent out yeah, to everyone this mm -hmm. afternoon. Yeah, yeah, I saw that did. picture. I saw that. It seems, and it appears to be definitely on conservation land, but this hasn't been surveyed, so it let's, let's nice say... Trail. Yeah, let's say it is. So this isn't where that private property is. This is on the other side, the Belmont side of the stream. Her question, she's incensed. That might be too strong. But she doesn't feel that the conservation land is a spot for a tree stand, which represents hunting. Well, but let's, let's examine that question. But, and she wants me to remove it. Well, let, let's so let's examine, examine all those questions. Let's examine that question. Um, I saw the picture of the tree stands. A lot nicer than the tree stands that I have, but um, or have had. But it's up outside of hunting season. 
Was there any evidence of that? I actually asked her when she found it the first time, was there snow prints, tracks, something like that around it, and she said only hers. Well, it's not a hunting, isn't it not a hunting season? Actually. No, no, this is not, well, she's asking, she just wants it removed because it's not supposed to be on conservation land. And no one's supposed to be hunting at the Temenek Swamp right. based on our rules. I mean, we did. I've climbed up in stands to look at birds. I've actually used, purchased hunting tree stands to look at birds. For that purpose. Yeah. For the purpose of looking at birds. That's not the main purpose of this yeah. structure. Well, I don't know about that because nobody's using it for hunting right now. I can well, guarantee you that. Okay, who? Well, I, I'm sorry. What bird would go out and construct a deer stand? <laughs> Seriously, I have. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, if you're, there, there is actually no um, viewing platform out in Timberneck Swamp. So one may be needed. <laughs> so, so. I mean, if you, yeah. if you do have, have to bring your own. two or three stories high, you right there, you can see three four times the area. Yes, and but if it's you not a deer snowy, stand. No, no, but I mean, I've used them for the exact same purpose. And I'm that's a national park, that, not a floor. Yeah. So the question is. Did they use it for hunting? That's a big problem. I wish we knew that. Well, the, I guess the question is, you know, it's conservation land. Does it belong there? That's another. That's another question. And do we have a policy to pull them down when, you know, and then who's going to do that? And you know, we, we have the authority to go down there and pull it down. Absolutely, we do. I would think so. Absolutely. And so I'm so that I'm completely clear on this. There was a lot of discussion previously. Previous meetings with deer hunting on private land, right? Yes. Are there any areas that is conservation land that deer hunting is allowed? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And there's Bear actually a little bit of language about where and how to install tree stands in that same oh, document. Oh, they are regulations? Are regulations? Yeah, there's something state. about certain trees and don't mark the trees yeah, up or something yeah or something, something like that oh, okay yeah. Yeah. so in this in this case is hunting allowed in that area no. or no. not okay no. so then that's the not answer. on the yeah. conservation yeah. land but it is allowed on the private property okay. next door. No, I, I but think this that's appears correct. to be on conservation you know land. in my opinion Sorry. this structure that was not approved by us not authorized by us to be constructed can get taken down absolutely and uh, you know it's it to me it's similar to other structures that people build in conservation land that we do not approve like teepees huts underground paintball, wood structure paintball, paintball. we took down you know so this so in my mind this falls into that category <laughs> that um is it in our budget and regular practice to do so? Yes. No. Yes. It's who, so if somebody puts a structure on conservation land, it's our regular practice. Take it down. But who now do we, we usually, what's the method we usually You Do we call up DPW and that say, That would be the typical method. Go but out and. This in. one is Chuck can go out there. Deep in. It. It's one of those you backpack <laughs> in. Don't you think, Chuck? I, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, you know, the only thing I thought of is not not that I care, and it's, I don't feel like I'm like this lightweight, but I could be considered that. Somebody owns this thing, and not we do. Yeah, not anymore. Somebody owns You're this. Put it on eBay. And um, what am I going to do after I take it down? Put Where it does it go? Put it in material cabin, garage, or I, basement. I don't see this as Chuck's job. I don't think it's don't part of his job to go out and take if this down. If we send DPW out there, they're going with a front end loader and they're cut <laughs> end, the front end of vegetation well, and build a road to get to if, it. If I'm not joking. That's well, exactly what they're going to do. If that's the case, stand, better so in the tree. winter than in the spring or summer. It's you know? better off actually going there right now. Right. right. I got snowshoes. Right, I do too. They could borrow some. I got them before the prices went So. So I think this needs to be handed off to 
I disagree. I you, think you Chuck, think Chuck should I, go out and do it? Chuck is a I, fine, healthy young man who goes out and hunts. Are you, you going to go help him? And Sure, I won't get there with it. I'm not, I, you know, I don't think I'll be, I don't care if the guy's standing out there as long as, as, long as he doesn't treat. shoot me. I Anything think up Jill until Jill that point, point, I'm okay. I, I'll go out there with you and I'll get shot. But I, I think just didn't Chuck know what the point was. No, I don't want any of you to get condition. shot. Probably. I mean, how, you've done this before. You've taken you've taken down like we paintball. We took down that paintball. Yeah. Thing. Well, there was a hut in Town Forest, wasn't there? There was an underground hut that had many know. rooms and different have. chambers. It was built into the remember. side of the slope. Where was this? <laughs> it was in Town Forest. <laughs> It was. It was. Uh, the fire marshal went out and said, "This is a fire hazard." A fire hazard in the middle of the forest. It was in the middle of the forest, and it was disguised. And I remember these. The, fire hazard. The, we've we've approved other yeah. structures that people have um, very creatively put That's up. That's interesting. We got some. Shop yeah, people. we've got some mm -hmm. really innovative builders and, and we, in town. And we I, could. Um, I'd love to see their energies uh, channeled and I'll, in more I'll productive bet you, ways. I'll bet you the neighbors would uh, be willing to help us out. Just the volunteers, just Perhaps, like build, but I don't just wanna, like building a walkway, they'd be volunteering to help clean up. I, Are I, we going all the time with volunteers and clean up trash and stuff and conservation? Land? If this there were a volunteer thing. crew here tonight who were willing to stand up right now and commit to that. Um, I'd say awesome, but right now I don't want to send anybody. anybody I don't want to send anybody. I don't want to go through that additional effort of enlisting because that means the job is going to get done later and later and later. You really want to pass DPW land by but foot. Which? So where does it go after? So I thought the Mature possibility cabin. to Matera cabins, the police station, town lost in yeah, town. Yeah, leave it no. It was probably leave a policeman that put it up there, or a fireman. Yeah. So, um, but but I I don't I would prefer if it's okay with you know the chief of police to have it in their lost and found. Right. Well, yeah, you could. Yeah, I mean. Because then it's then it just seems like if someone called and said what 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 you do with it? Well, it's having chair cabin. I don't have a key. You know, I don't I don't have keys well, to the garage. They don't get it back. They don't get it back. I think it's abandoned property at this point. It is. It's on our property. You better with like a root puller or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> One of those out there. Yeah. All right. Seriously. Okay, so. So you want me to go and get it? That the commission, that's fine. We don't have to vote on it. That that's, and put it in material cabin or, or or just throw it out, whatever. And and if you need help. No, well, I think I, some help. I can backpack out of there. Hopefully. He's and if you need sh snowshoes, call me. Right. I've got two pair of adult snowshoes. Anyway, okay, moving on. Next. Um, yes, same person, same same spot, mm -hmm. Tabernacle Swamp. Um, they want the uh, no hunting signs to go up sooner than later. They're gonna present at the next meeting on a timed agenda item. Wait, on which our meeting? Our meeting, yeah. Did and they're gonna request this. We've already approved signs. But we're apparently going too slow. So. Do we know where we're going to put them? All that has to happen. But now we have motivated abutters. And. We gonna, who's going to pay for the surveyor? I mean, seriously. No, no, these signs aren't going in the interior. They're going around the perimeter. Yeah. So. We know what that line is. Yeah, it's the street. Are these oh. the folks that have yeah. come before us? Before? Yeah. So, like, uh, Chow okay. Street. And she's the one who found. The no. no, no, those That's aren't. It's person. not the marshals. Oh, okay. It's you got the email. I got the email. It's Fire her name's on them. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Did you talk? Did you meet them? I talked on the phone to this lady. Do you remember the wife's name? Her name. Pretty. So, uh, so, so you're going to. So they're coming in, and we're going to talk about. Well, they just want to uh, speed up. The process the signs, of but posting signs. So I didn't know if you wanted, so, so I did a quick search. Con, you know, no hunting signs, plastic are $9 each, okay? We need like 30 of these things, okay? Maybe more. I didn't get a chance to call a printing company to find out what plastic signs that said no hunting per order of the Bread and Conservation Commission costs. Must be $10 at least. Right, yeah. right. 
So that's an issue. Who's going to pay for it? What are they going to say? What are they going to be made out of? Should it be permanent or not? You know, where are they going to go? All that kind of stuff. I mean, the Ivy Street, uh, Belmont Ivy in that area, all the open spots, every 20 feet. I, I, I don't know. We well, didn't really get into all that. If we just put it as access points, then we wouldn't need 30 signs. See, I thought we did. I thought when, at the last meeting, my memory is we were talking about posting these no hunting signs along like every 30 feet along the entrance roads. Every 30 feet, that's ridiculous. You, that's way too. Frequent? Well, at that point, nobody can say, I didn't see a sign. And then were we only doing it during hunting season? So like beginning of November to the end of December, that's our typical allowed in other spots air time. Uh, the other thing, you have to put them up high or people will see that. So you have to go to the step by. Okay. And they're usually, aren't they usually yellow or something like yeah. that? Yeah, and when I've seen them, they, they don't take them down after something. So they stay up. Yeah, I mean, I, that's why I yeah. wanted the yeah. plastic ones, because yeah. once we put them up... They're up. Hopefully they stay up. So the, yeah. the point was, between now and the next meeting, we'd be able to understand how many signs we need, to understand if we need any kind of uh, sign, like a pole or something, or a bracket to put these things on, because maybe along a swampy area, yeah. there's not going to be a tree. Yeah. So, and how how many and how much they cost, okay. who's going to pay for it. But I think putting them up, these people that I talk to can get people to do that. So that that wouldn't be a problem. But if it was, you know, I can do it too. We well, can get them to do it. Yeah, I mean, it seems to me that there's a lot of good things that can happen. What I'd like to have these people do is contact everybody around Timberneck Swamp. And when these shotgun blasts go off maybe they can just email each other and see right. if see what's going on right. because is it a shotgun is it fireworks you know right, right. okay is it a solar flare if we put them just where there's a place to park i think that's the only thing we, we can actually fall right back to the the um areas that were described to to install signs because that's in the timberneck swamp um you know, there's spots to um, install signs that for hunting and spots to so install signs for no hunting. We haven't been doing the n no hunting signs. Is, is this in a town master plan? Kind of? No, it's in, space I don't know if it's in the master plan, wow. but okay. it's definitely in the file. Okay. Okay. So we, that, but that's only two or three spots. And I, I think we need a couple more than two or three. Well, yeah. along the main road makes a lot of sense. I mean, we want to make a statement and want to yeah. get people yeah. to get involved yeah. okay so okay take the thing down and they're coming in next meeting okay and what else do you have we have we have bills i'd like to approve some bills for the uh MACC conference. conference okay and uh, who else Brian, is going what time you picking me up with coffee it's just me and you and i'm going oh, very good i'll do this really Brian's quick. like i won't try um MACC, I have um, a bill that's going to go directly to MACC for Anika and Brian for $230. I move we approve that. A second. And Is I have a reimbursement to um, Allison Steger for $115. She paid for herself, and then I'm reimbursing her. Oh, so Allison's going too. I Alice, guess Allison's yeah. going too. Okay, I move my motion. Okay, I'll second that. All those in favor? Okay. All right, anything else, Chuck? Uh, do we want to participate in the Lions Club Friends and Family Day on June 13th? Yes, we do. And Artist is making some changes at their site, Eric's Greenhouse. Those changes in include adjusting the landscape, installing more sidewalk in that walking areas. Oh, okay. They're encroaching a little bit four or five feet into our areas. They're installing a, um, a manhole. But to compensate for this, these changes, they're doing more uh, pervious pavers, and they're, okay. and they're turning five parking spots into pervious pavers. But there's a discussion about, which is exactly where the snow storage is, and salt on pervious pavers. And I found the, M, um, the UNH website said salt's not a problem. Right. But e so. the D, uh, EPA says it is. Really? I, I think to 
Yeah. I'm going with uh, UNH because they are. The UNH has done some exhaustive research on salt. Yeah. They said it actually um, speeds up I remember the that. melting process. I remember that. Because it, once this the ice is melts, completely opposite. Once the ice melts, it clears, so you need less the ice. Right. Because when, when the ice melts, it, it infiltrates down through it. It doesn't refreeze. This will come up later because okay. they need to come for, in front of us. It's a plan change. That's well, simple. They also owe us the design of that created weapon. Right. They, they, I'm gonna, I'll send you tomorrow. I didn't want to confuse anyone tonight. I'm going to send you some plans tomorrow, and you're going to notice, and Jamie, this is your baby, a weir exactly where you didn't want one because engineering <laughs> didn't talk to you know whatever the consultants the so we, is, we yeah. still have a weir there so if you want to act on that you can or are you satisfied with the weir and there's a you remember you wanted to remove that and you want to just I have it open remember that. okay and I also remember that they had to submit the design to us for our approval mm-hmm they haven't done that yet. No, they're, they're, because there was something where engineering needed to provide certain material for them to move forward on it. Run off from the roadway or something like yeah. that. Something like that. So they're using that. They're saying, look, we're not getting anything. I don't even know if George wants to be involved in that. So Can maybe we? you could talk to George and kind of get him. And he's sick and it won't be back until Do Monday. Do have but a plan? You said there's a plan with a wheel on it. Yeah, I'll send that to you. I'll send it to you. Um, I have it. Okay. I got it. They got everything send today. As well. But I didn't want to send it out just before the meeting because right. so I wanted we'll to tell right you there. first. I want to see what that weird looks like. Yeah. We can send it out to everybody, but we can't talk about it until a meeting. It's not a submittal. Oh, it's not. It's yeah, this is page. from the planning board. I got oh, it from okay. Jesse. Okay. So they have to submit everything to us later for this plan change, but we're getting on top of it. Um, okay. There is um, that Article 7 thing that's coming up. We've sent a few emails out saying, hey, does anyone comments, want to be involved? Comments, comments, yeah. You want to be comments? You want to go to the meeting? Do you want to be part of the process? Is that the act for some? Um, no, it's the uh, residential development, the PUDs, but oh, it's right. the. So we want to, I'm assuming the commission wants to be part of the rewriting of, of whatever that article was or not yeah I've sent everybody so I know the only thing I have to do is I'm, no one's gonna answer but I'm gonna tell them that we want to be part of yeah it. Ba based on the based on the issue that we had that was identified in the thing that we've actually um, sent on to the well you know and if you can make sure you copy Will Finch on anything to do with that well, didn't I say, yeah, on that email I sent out, I said, you know, to the commission and friends of the commission. Yeah. That was the one that started this whole thing, and I sent it to Will, too, but I didn't hear from him. I don't expect to hear from him. I think we can take this on. We just want to review uh, this before yeah. 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 it's finalized. Yeah. And, and the meeting's like next Monday. Because it wasn't clear to them, and it was pretty clear to me when I read it, that... But, you know, obviously, someone has to go. Well, we, we think there's a wetland here, and so we're going to plant it this way, and then, like, yeah, the wetland's not there. Well, I didn't put it who's in. available to go next Monday? I can I don't, I'll i send you know. next Monday. There's one on next Monday, and there's one following that. I think a letter will work for next Monday. But if you can only make that one, then go to that one. And then don't go to the next one, because you're only asking to be part of the process. At the meeting, we're only asking to be part of the process. That's it. And they're going to... They're, you, they're, you can't just send them a letter to that No, no. I said I could send a letter for the, the meeting on the 6th. But if that's the only one you can go to, I just see, show see, up see, at that meeting right, if you right, can't right. make the next meeting, right. which I don't have the date. Right. I'll put that stuff in here. So wait, they're meeting Monday. The second? Yeah, that's the second. We want to be included in the process, but what we want to come out of that is that Conservation Commission has to review and vote on that before it's presented to the town meeting. Yeah, because we need to determine whether or not they, they, right. they did the line. Right. So they need to come to us for approval um, or come to us for comment before it's presented to the town meeting. That's what we need to have. That okay. That did not happen last time. And I think what they're doing is they're just saying 
it's their baby and you need to ask to be part of it. So you're kind of saying it differently, like it's something you're, we're in charge of as conservation That commission. we're in charge of, but we need to review it and <coughs> express an opinion before it comes before that meeting. Yeah, because the, the whole application process is based on what you put in there under the current regulations. And then, you know, if they're saying, oh, based on the current zoning, we can do this, and there's a wetland where they want to do that, they can't do that. Right. So... So it completely changes the nature of their submittal, or has the potential to anyway. All right, so all these dates have passed, but it is the um, planned development, planned unit development, and planned oh. residential development. This is what we're talking about. ERD. And then the Aquifer Protection District, and the dates on here are from last year, but those were the two. And as I, reading, from what Will had written, you know, we, we want to be a part of this. We want to make sure that mm -hmm. it's go to the Conservation Commission first because we're going to put our setbacks in place because we have this, this wetland line which isn't measured off anything. It needs to be established first and voted on because that's how it works. So once that's established, then they can put all their zoning lines in there and make them work. But our wetland line isn't just a measurement. Yeah, right. Now, the Act for Protection District, there's a DEP requirement for Act for Protection District. And we need somebody to make sure that what uh, the Planning Department is proposing is in compliance with the DEP regulations. They need, they need to tie it to their... They need to tie it to well, their I'll energy. pass all that on to Brian. Because Who's up on top of this stuff? Who? Brian. Me? Mr. Sullivan. Oh. <laughs> they, they need to talk. I know that the, the, what, they, what we have now or what we've traditionally had in the town is this static document. They say, all right, these are where the lines are, and right. the zone two well heads and right. the nature well head protection areas. Right. 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 They change right. over time. Right. So you need to tie it to the live map. This is, this is a, an example of where you need to tie it to the live map, unlike the wetland line, which are not necessarily correct. Because if someone puts a well in next door to you, if you're looking at an old map, how the hell do you know it's there? If it's a public water supply well, which, believe it or not, is not very big. Well, yeah. what what um, a large contention in the town wants to do is eliminate the extra district because we don't get our water from that. Because water stops at town boundaries. I forgot about that. Right. Yeah. And DEP, that's, that's, uh, that's not... Um, in conformance with DEP regulations, because even though we don't get our water from that, from the groundwater, it is still an approved it's a, DEP it's water. It is, water and source. it's auxiliary. It's the, it's the backup. Water. It's the backup. It's yeah. the emergency water. It's, it's still a state, so it's state still regulation. Approved. Right. Right. Okay. So these meetings are zoning meetings. Uh, CPDC. 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 Yep. And then. They were part of the zoning bylaw committee, but that okay. they're finished. Um, can I? And the next meeting starts Monday, March. 2nd. There's one next week, I believe it. I thought the sixth, but if that's not that's not Monday. That's not Monday. No. Second. So second they're always on Monday. What? Yeah. Second is Monday. The second is yeah. Monday. Well, I'll get those dates to you okay, tomorrow. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. I mean, it, it, again, I have to say because they are sent out. I get lucky. I'll just I'll just search it. Okay, anything else? I'm done. Okay. Except then, for minutes. Um, okay, then I'm going to mention, uh, just tell everybody about a meeting I went to. I went to the open house for the Tennessee Gas Pipeline Project. Um, and uh, and the, I looked at their maps, and, and they were pretty much the same maps that... Uh, We'd gotten copies of it's just the part of Reading that the proposed gas line goes through is the very, very um, northeast corner of Reading through is it Cedar Swamp over there? Cedar Swamp, and I North think Cedar North Cedar Swamp, um, and it just nicks North Cedar Swamp and. The way they're going to do 
the construction is they're going to put the pipe in. I think it's a 20 inch. Um, what is it? That's a big gap. 20 inch Linfield lateral is what they're calling it. Uh, it's not the biggest pipe they're proposing in their whole project, but um, um, a 20 inch Linfield lateral. And um, their plan, the way it was described to me was they're going to really hug the uh, electric utility overhead easement. They're going to just put in the, they're just going to be, they said, we're going to be five feet off the easement just south of it. We're just going to run the line just outside of their easement. Um, and um, it just seemed to me that it was pretty, I mean, that, that said, um, it was going to have maybe, you know, for a 20 inch line, they're going to affect maybe, you know, maybe 10 feet of excavation uh, through the solid areas. And I don't know how they plan to lay this with all their equipment and to seal it and lay it in. I, I mean, nobody told me exactly. And clearly, it's probably mostly for the equipment. I mean, no, they can usually put those lines in pretty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they don't have to maintain grades. Um, um, And I was asking them. Um, I, I, they, have they defined how many, how many square feet or acres of wetlands they're going to? No, no. But the, I said, I said, do you have any idea when we might see you before the town board? And they said we will be going before town boards. We don't know exactly when yet. Is it all? Did they say it was all cut and cover, or are they going to do directional drilling, or? I think it's cut and cover. I think it's cut and cover. I've never seen that yeah. No. And, you know, what's after, so then I was thinking about the integrity of the pipe. I said, you know, what do you, what do you guys have for, you know, to ensure that this pipe isn't going to, once it's in there, isn't going to be an ongoing risk. And they said, they said they've got um, really sophisticated inline pressure monitoring system so they know right away when they have a leak along their <clears> pipe <throat> and where it is and how much um, but more is coming more is coming this year um, and it wasn't a lot of detail but it's kind of interesting that's not kinder morgan is it no. yeah it is yeah oh yep tennessee gas kinder morgan owned by kinder morgan uh. so yeah called the NED project, Northeast Energy Direct. So, so I went to that. Um, not NED, that's NED. Well, they, -E they, call, they called it NED. So. Um, and the other thing I wanted to bring up was um, a little bit of a, a budget discussion regarding the town budget this year. Um, at this point, the budget that I think is getting sent to the finance committee um, pays for our administrator full time, which is um, which is definitely what we want to see. Well, um, is it? You have to resign in box her. I do. You're not disappointed. And that and that was recommended by uh, Jean Delios and Bob Lola, sure. To the selectmen and, and we have to take committee. over the maintenance and operation of, of, of McCarrick Cabin, which is not just a, it's not a turnkey operation. You, you have to shovel and you have to clean and you and you have to promote this place and you have to show it. So they they do about twenty five hundred um, in rentals. The recreation department doesn't want to do it anymore. John is John has been promoted. Uh, to uh, uh, division head, department head, he's been promoted. He's taking on more responsibility, and he's getting rid of this. Is he still going to be the recreation? He director? is, and he's also going to be. In, he's also overseeing health and some other things. So, um, so there's a, there's. Um, Could they be persuaded if we took over the maintenance to? 
to, to, to keep the rental aspects because they're so set up for that. We don't want to have to set up a whole new system. We wouldn't be set, I, I don't think we'd be setting up a new system. We'd just be taking over what no, they've well, already see, done. See, they have a big system that runs at all the fields and right. facilities. And this is just another line item in that, that whole spreadsheet, that whole loop. Right. And we don't want to create our own system. No, no, no. Just no, no. No, no I, well, I don't think that would happen. I think, I think, what's, what's your understanding from John? I, I think that it must be easy for John to rent since he rents a lot of stuff. We're going to get his, we're going to get his program to, to do it or we're going to use his program. The part that, I mean, so that's just, you know, paperwork. So that's going to, that's going to end up being fine. Um, but the part that seems to be biggest problem would be, you know, you never know when someone wants to see it. You have to accommodate these people. I mean, it's just part of it. You have to clean before and after. There's not only those outside rentals, the town uses it too. So, you know, the library uses it, yeah. but the, the um, recreational department is, is putting on the same program that they did last year. So it's going to be used a bunch of times during the summer. So all that needs to be taken care of. Now, John's not just going to dump it in my lap, but I agree, if we could pick and choose what works for conservation, it would be a better system. Yeah. I mean, it would work out a lot better. Yeah. I think we can start putting on some walks and whatnot too, um, now that we wanna promote it. I don't know if, if anyone wants to be there on certain days, but at least doing some of our own walks and some of our own talks. We did that at one point. We had somebody there every Saturday morning. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did back when Barbara was around. Yeah. So I think we yeah. could definitely add that to you know what the commission does. Yep. Yep, I agree. It's oh yeah, we gotta get gotta get out there. It, you ever watch F Troop? Yeah. It's like that. <laughs> it's it's nice like that. No, I'm serious. It's like that. It's like so. Oh sweet. On the well, nice weddings. Weddings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a mm -hmm. terraced yard behind it it's really nice um, so so we need to put in some effort to support the budget um, process moving forward though um, the next uh, FinCom meeting where uh, this budget is going to be discussed is March 4 which is next Wednesday I'm going to be going um, I'm going to be going if we're going to have a quorum going we need to know we won't have a quorum going you're not going to go if Brian so, isn't going to be here, guaranteed so, we will have more. I'm, I'm, no, I'm going. I'm going to the, that meeting. Thing. Oh, yeah. Thing. So um, I'm just being out of my. Okay. No. Problem. Rebecca, and do you think you might be interested? Yeah, I might be. Okay. Um. um where, where would that be? I think it's here. Houston, Houston. Houston. Um, okay. So that's Wednesday. That's next Wednesday, the fourth. Yep. I don't know the time, but I'm sure we can figure it out. Um. I think we should have some um, bullet points to kind of support um, this budget for Chuck. Um, and Brian, you've drafted something that you sent to me. Mm -hmm. um, I could put that in. I think some concrete bullet points about um, how things have improved since the reg changes. Um, you know, and the administration change, and the administration change, and I think you know how we're operating now, and how it's a good thing we'll that Chuck gets well, more time. If we're operating well now, they say, "Well, why do you need more time?" So be careful. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. Right. I think. Well, I think the, the well, reason think why things are going so smoothly is because of the efforts that. This, this is a point that I would raise if I was going to be there. With only a part-time administrator, a huge workload is falling on the volunteer commissioners. Yes. And as a result, we've lost our commissioners and we're down to the yep. point where if one person is sick and doesn't show up, we have to cancel the meeting. Yeah. And all no building permits are approved. Whoa, 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 wait. But that's, that's from the loss of that. That has resulted in the loss of commission members? 
Well, one of them moved to Colorado. Um, Another will, moved to will, Florida. Will, will left. Bill um, Heck left. I mean, it's it's a huge load. I I um, making site visits. Well, I do think. No, I don't mean the normal site visits. I mean, if it's construction in the morning. Yeah. I stop by that West Street every morning. I do, I do think there is because a point we to be didn't made have an administrator there. in the morning, and right. that's that's not right. appropriate for commissioner to do. Right, right. We need some consistency from the office. And consistency, that's a good point. I mean, if Brian goes out there one day and tells him to yep. pen saying, and I go out there the next day and tell him it's fine, that's that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think another thing that's a valid point is since the regs changes. Chuck is now the single evaluator of what's a minor project, and he takes care of those. And that clears out a certain amount of the RDA permit load um, single-handedly. So he's kind of a minor project administrator right now as it is. So that's kind of an additional um, authority that he has in the office. And he definitely needs to come in and you know, have a full-time conservation person who can avoid problems going forward yeah. that we've experienced. And it should help with it should help with everything. I mean, I can't yeah. possibly not help. I, 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 you know, I can't, I can't help but think, you know, that if, that if, that if we had an administrator that was available that you could pick the phone up and say, hey, yeah. what about this? Then some certain issues that are going on right now in town wouldn't have happened. There's a, you know, there's a lot of people that come in, you know, a lot more than used to. Just come in and they want to talk over their projects for and, us. And you're available for that. Th they come in when I'm here. Yeah, yeah. So it could be more. Gonna, yeah. This yeah. is what we're going to be up to that I can hear coming in on ten meeting four. How long have you been operating as part time administrator? It's been what four years. Yeah, it's going to come. We've been four long. years with part time administrator. Why should we change that? That's going to be the the counter argument. Am I allowed to be cynical? Well, yeah. I mean, I would counter by saying. You know, in the in those four years, um, after the fact, enforcement orders have I don't think have gone down. They've probably gone up. Well, they've definitely gone up because we haven't had a full time administrator available to as a point of contact to avoid problems before they begin, costing. Applicants. And you can stand up and say after the fact enforcement orders have gone out, I and mean, John Arena will say, I've looked at them and they've gone down. I don't think they have. Well, I, if we say that, we need to know that. Because right. John Arena will be yep. all over us. Yep, no, I understand. Well, there's the, we do fill up that form so you'd, that you'd have that information. But I, I would think they, I, well, I know I don't write many and I don't try to. You know, Fran seems to be the, you know, everyone says she probably wrote a lot. So I would think they went down. I don't know. I, I, yeah. I think the important thing to bear in mind is, you know, especially with someone uh, mentioning, you know, heavy handed enforcement, whether, he, whether the administrator is here or not here, the law is the same. Mm. So if you can't ask the question, you know, I mean, you're responsible. No matter what. If you have a full-time administrator, you have access to to you know everyone in town, and they're going to have an opportunity to come in and talk. So you don't have to do your work through applications. You can do it through just you know one-on-one -on -one discussion. Yeah. So the you know if you don't have any time, you have to come in and file a permit because I don't have time to go out and look at it. Right. I got to do something else. Right. But if I went out and looked at your project, it might not be anything I need to worry about. I know the commission doesn't need to worry about this stuff either. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of good good points. Plus, you can take on other things, whatever they may be. Okay. I mean, the town's going to come up. Certainly, there's there's a whole bunch of those morning meetings. I never go to any of those. Not one. George usually uh, handles. Uh, between all of them now, they all, they handle whatever conservation needs to say. Yeah. So. This, this is one thing you can say. When we change the regulations, we also uh, voted to develop a set of policies. 
things so applicants would know what our policies were. We have not been able to do that. The other thing we uh, agreed to do and voted to approve was a list of minor projects so somebody could go and see if their project was on there, yeah. then they know we haven't been able to do that. So we want definitive, provable things that we had, had voted to do and have not been able to do. They're, so two, they're two big things. So that list of minor projects, is that just a tally? Of all the, or is it a FAQ, or is it a? It's kind of an FAQ type thing. Okay. A dynamic list, I think, is what we call it. Okay. Anything else you guys can think of? Yes, we are asked to sign documents that we haven't had a chance to read <laughs> because we don't, <laughs> don't have a full time administrator to disseminate them. That's, that was the good thing. And it puts us in a huge uh, uh, vulnerable position. else? No? Okay, um, I didn't have anything else, so um, I'll try and draft some bullet points based on what was said, and uh, if anybody has any more constructive arguments or persuasive details, send them my way. Um, keep, keep in mind, um, the Finance Committee is looking at many, 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 many millions of dollars of issues. This is a $30,000 issue. Um, we have to be laser focused. We can't be, uh, and I can spend a lot of time on this one issue. So we need to hit them with concise. Yep. You, yep. You're going to contact Gene to find out when, what time during the meeting to show up? Sure. I think they have it broken down like that. Sure. Yeah, we have to sit there. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of other people. Yeah, that's, that's the whole point, yeah. Okay. But I think before we go, if we if we have something in writing, we could submit that ahead of time. Um, so that they have it in hand. Um, I guess I just wanted to mention that um, when I saw a selectman's meeting in the last month or so, um, I saw Mr. Halsey mention that he was in the process of pursuing uh, the property owner of that little parcel mm -hmm. um, and approaching the little, parcel. the little parcel in the parcel in the private parcel in the middle of Timberneck Swamp that's so troublesome from a hunting perspective, and so I think he's taken initiative to to pursue. Uh, property ownership options. So I don't know what the result there, but anyway, any other questions or anything else to add or discuss tonight? Otherwise, I'm going to dismiss. Uh, I did a scout talk at St. Ana uh, Athanasius. 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 Yeah. Yep. And uh, I did it on wildlife and animals, and they seemed to enjoy it. And I passed out little tick removers at the end, Great. which was basically all I had. So uh, it worked out well, and um, that's one of the things I actually found time to do. And we got something from the town of Wakefield about that roadway that was put in off Walker's Brook, and this came up last year, mm -hmm. and they're calling mm -hmm. that a dam, and it's flooding Wakefield, and it's, really? it's turning into an, um, a big deal. And their engineer has basically said that was installed <coughs> wrong, creates flooding over on Are you talking about Wakefield. For the, for the, the sign board or something like that? Yeah. No, there's like the, remember that thing that they had to cut two holes in and we allowed them to do that, the two openings in that roadway that's out on Walker's Brook? I vaguely remember that. I thought it was near opposite Home Depot. It, it's in that Jordan's. Home Depot area. Yeah. It's behind Home Depot in that marsh, isn't it? I thought it was, I thought it was in front of Home are you, oh, you're talking about where the equipment got stuck? No. No, no. Well, no, no. There's a there's like an access road. There was some utility road, something like that, that we needed to go in when when the um, Home 
Depot went in. Oh, I, I'm thinking of something different. I'm not so familiar. Is, is George Zimboris involved in this? I sent it to you guys. <laughs> I sent it to you. No, no, just now. It just okay. came up again. Last year, it was a discussion because they're having playing, and we're saying, did you check for beavers? Did you check, you know, did the culverts are not blocked? Did you check all this stuff? Me and George just talked to the administrator and the engineer for, for Wakefield. And now it's turned into, this, you know, their engineers saying that there's definitely an issue. We need to come up. And there's a Where, dam where's the flooding ha happening in Wakefield? Um, by Converse? It's over by, I think it's over by the Colonial Health Center, the Colonial Sheraton, or whatever it is. You know what I mean? No. Where's you know, when you go down 128 3 exit that's on your left. Parker Road? Hotel. Used to be, it's where Whole Foods is now. Yeah. It used to be a golf course. Yeah. I think that's, that's not where Wakefield, that's Linkfield. Yeah, that's Linkfield. The, the, the Colonial Hill was in uh, Wakefield. We've experienced tremendous flooding on Parker that. Road. My engineer is of is the it? opinion that the big problem is that utility road Redding is acting in Redding is acting like a dam. I think you must be talking about line road. Track road, you mean. Track road, yeah. There's there's a line road down there too. There's a line road yeah. down there, but I think track road is one that's it's in that area, right? That's must be what okay. you're talking about. The so, high REI. Because that's the only one that I can I can think of. No, there's track. one on the other side. Back behind, uh, Home Depot. Okay, so Line Road is North. behind Cumberland Farms and REI. Right. Okay, so, um, so wait, so big green thing? this is 129. Yeah, what's that big green spot right there? That's the Old Town Wells pumping station. That's Bay State Road. What am I looking at here? Yeah. That's 129, so that's over by the Elks. So that's not does this in help Redding. you guys? I believe the water. I believe the flooding is related to the water main installation with a, within a utility access road. Where though? Where where are we talking about? Across the wetlands between Ash Street and Walkersbrook Road. Ash Street and Walkersbrook. Between Road. oh man, we're talking over right here, here then. Right in here. Yeah. Yeah, that's where the, the, the equipment got stuck. That's where the equipment got stuck. Yeah. Let me see. Where are That's New Crossing Road. Right. Ash Street is over here. This, this is, where the is Ash got Street. Stuck right in here. That's the right. we're talking about. Behind that well, we know. Station. So where are they experiencing flooding? Because they're on the other side of. They're saying Parker and Putnam Ave. Oh, probably. Oh, it's going down here. Okay. Oh, so that is you remember, Wakefield. Jamie, you and I had a site visit down here. The we walked was, uh, in the muck Delta on this Ash access Street. road. Delta right, Ash that is, that's exactly what we walked, was down here. Yeah. And they were talking about yeah. drilling yeah. some holes. Right. They right. did. They put, They were going to put some shallow, right. like, eight-inch pipes or something. Right. So they're in there. And they couldn't do it. Didn't the thing get stuck? They got one in, and it wasn't done right, and they couldn't get yeah, it. Yeah, something happened. Out. So the recommendations are to install a couple of swales to establish drainage across the road. They no, didn't they, they wanted to put um, trap rock in there? Didn't they want to dig it out? But no, trap this rock is the town engineer from Week. I'm saying that, but uh, ready. We wanted to put trap rock. They want to dig it out, and put trap rock in there, so yeah. the water could flow right through it. So, so let me ask you, um, Chuck. What are they proposing to do at this point? Are they going to come in? They can't do anything. George no, is going to. No, they want no, us to investigate. We gave them a permit. We gave them a permit to put a sway or something yeah. across yeah. that. Nothing we gave our own town of engineering, right. our to yeah. own town engineering, to, to put in those little. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. For the most part, George agrees with all the, you know, whatever they said in Wakefield. And he's going to answer the letter, and it looks like we're going to have to do some work. Okay. Without the permit, we're not. No, no, exactly, we but right. we've issued one. We've issued one for the federal some flow that equal to the... That was like an RDA or something. We wanted to put in two, and we told them we approved one and see how yes. that works. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and, and come back. And if it doesn't work, come back to us, yeah. and he was good with that. Yeah. Uh, I believe I showed, sent, just, sent this whole thing just to you. Everything's in it. You guys should be... Okay. 
good to go. Yeah, because the photo that we saw, there was a serious differential in water. Oh, yeah. One side and they and I were right there, and the water was, was like eight, ten inches higher on one side than the other. Well, if there's any significant additional melt in between now and the next site visit, which is doubtful, but who knows, oh, um, maybe no we could add that to the site there's visit. There's no way we can that road. Snowshoes. Snowshoes. I've got snowshoes. We just made out. You got those little see? tiny ones? Those I do. Yeah. yeah. What about whatever happened to the bear paw? I got, I got lots of snowshoes. Back in the day. So any other items? No? Motion to dismiss? Second. Second? All right. All those in favor? Leave. All right. Thanks, everyone. Meeting.